Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Destined to Roll. We are going to be hanging out and playing some D&D tonight. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And I am so here for it. <laughs> but some quick announcements. If you're not following us on Twitter, it's at Roll Destined. Come give us a follow when you have a moment. Our YouTube channel is down below in the panels if you want to click and catch up on stuff that you missed. Um, we are back in Wanderer's Path tonight, which will be super yeah. fun. Uh, I'll get to a recap later. But the other news is that next week, Thursday, we are starting a new campaign. The people that you hear here today will be playing in it. And we have a new DM who is absolutely amazing. But the campaign's called Blood in the Shadows. And it's going to be a really Ooh. fun... I know, I love the title yeah, so much. Really edgy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My like... Edgy low-key emo heart is here for it um <laughs> but we it'll be super fun and it'll have a we'll have a good time the characters are amazing but that will be uh, at 6 p.m pacific standard time because that's where my brain is right now um and we will start that on thursday and if you follow us on twitter we'll give announcements in case you forget so that'll be great um I don't think we have any other announcements, so we'll I'm will be playing a healer for once. <laughs> yeah! Rosario won't be playing a healer for once, so that will be really yeah. fun. I will be playing a healer, so everyone's gonna die. <laughs> yeah, Please. pretty much. Be <laughs> all your gold or I won't heal you. Yeah. <laughs> That's low-key, low-key what it is. So, um, anyways... Uh, well then, I guess that we can get started. So, if you... I don't know where I was going with that sentence. I don't know. I think I was going to ask if anybody else had anything, but we are... we're good. So, recap from last week. Um, we were back after a brief hiatus, so the group dove back into the campaign. They were at the Sandbar Oasis, which is a city in the middle of the desert, um, on a man-made oasis that's Pretty cool, a little innovative um, for the area, and is centered around the the uh, Charsepta Archives, who are a group of libraries that worship Sakuna, the Heavenly Archivist. So the group did some shopping. Um, they found out that somebody's been painting, or somebody was painting a weird story of them on the like graffiti carving in the wall, which was a little creepy, so they think they might have a follower. Um, <laughs> and then they went and explored the city on their own, gathering some supplies that they'll need before heading off for Kemel Z, which is the Dwarven Ruin, um, kind of in the North Mountains in the Kag... Oh my gosh, I can never read my own handwriting on this map because it's so small. Kag... Kagrenzel. There we go. Mountains. Um... So they stocked up. Uh, Dr. Rooks actually ended up having a pretty intense conversation with Sakuna, which was uh, gave a little bit of insight on what's going on, as well as what the item that they are going after is and what they're kind of facing. Um, Rooks said nothing at all having to do with his backstory. <laughs> yep, nothing, no <laughs> info. So the group set off traveling north uh, along the the east side of the mountains and got about halfway there and then they were attacked by a couple giants so it was pretty entertaining uh, <laughs> they kind of just let the group kind of just let snud and xylova hack away at them and dr rooks healed and some other people did some battlefield control but it was it was kind of just like are, are we running are we not it was a pretty entertaining fight but the group is continuing their travels today, uh, heading for Kamel Z, and going to we'll see what happens. So, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off. Um, you guys are traveling. You are about three days out, I would say, uh, after finishing this intense fight. Um, but but... Three days after the fight? No, 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 no. You were... You were about three days out from Kamelzi. You were like, okay. it was about a 10 day. Oh no, you were five days. Sorry, I said you were five when the fight happened. But it was about a 10 day journey. So you're about five days out um, as you <laughs> finish this pretty intensive fight. 
Um, well, not super intensive, but it was entertaining. And uh, you continue to travel along the road. Um, can I... PM. Yes. I'm just going to ask. Um, <clears throat> can Brooks make a perception check? Because he is not happy about the fact that someone is apparently following them. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Make a perception check to be watching for people following. Let's see. First roll of the night, boys. Natural one. I got a 16. That is lower than my passive perception. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Okay, good to know. I will keep that in mind. Um, But... Anyway, so as you guys carry on... Um, I'm going to have, if two of you could make a, hmm, let's do, for the sake of this, can I have two people make survival checks? Oh, I got it. That's I got it. Holo, that's Arcata. I will also okay. do a survival check. Wait. Snug Wait, and any match. Wait, can I make an Arcana check? No, there's no Arcana. Hey, we're making Arcana. When I'm more knowledgeable, and I don't even have magic. Oh I'm, my I'm God. slipping up today for sure. Yeah, Elman's very distracted. Oh, yeah, yeah, 14, 14. 14. She said two people, guys. Yeah, she said two survivals, two arcana. I'm pretty no, sure. No, I just Sorry. said two survivals. Sorry about that. Snow. I rolled first, so I think so. I think we should probably just take our lower rolls. Oh my God. Okay. So <laughs> we have a survival of 14 and a survival of 14. So, good to know. You guys maybe should just like communicate who's doing what first. Just saying. I said who. I said I'll do it. <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone knew I was gonna roll Arcana, so I don't think. Yeah, because you roll. Yeah, Arcana, I mean, we but... should know what's going on in the magical world. Yeah. Well, you guys look around. There is nothing magical around you. I'll what cast minor my... illusion to remedy that. <laughs> there is now something magical around you well there's always something magical like on us okay yeah i mean i mean like your magic items <laughs> oh my lanta we're I'm just starting lanta. and it's already gone to chaos um <laughs> i love you guys yeah. yes <clears throat> all right i don't know what that was i know which way is north of you yes i know i always take right. that into account it really saves your ass a lot that damn feet Anyway, so, uh, you guys continue to travel, uh, getting closer and closer to the location of Kemelzi, getting further up into the mountains. Uh, it begins to get colder, and the days seem, like, darker with the increasing size of the mountains on the east, so you don't get as much sunlight. Um, your additional five days pass without much trouble. So, other than, like, the occasional wolf attack or, like, a bear stumbling through your campsite uh, and some other things of that nature, but you're very able to... You're very able... Yeah, that's good, or English. You're very Super capable... <laughs> you're very capable and able to drive them off very easily. Uh, on... And you're also able to keep track as to where you are going. Uh, especially, Dr. Rooks, you're starting to see a little bit more in terms of when you had that flash-forward vision, starting to see a little bit more familiar landscape and the like. So Now it's been five days? So it's been the additional five days. On the last day, as the sun is kind of setting behind you as you start to, the path turns and kind of go up into the mountains a little bit more, you begin to see the semblance of stone buildings carved into the mountains uh, about, I would say, two miles off, kind of above you. These, ri these buildings seem to rise several hundred feet um, high. Several of them have, like, metallic brass-covered roofs or like different notes as to uh besides just the stone and the shine of it seems to be faded over several hundred years of spending in the elements so dr rooks you recall that ebony showed you a small gazebo type building and the these types of buildings were kind of far in the background and so you begin as you kind of recognize this area to look around for such a 
small gazebo type building like separated from everything else. So I need you to make a perception check. I get advantage? Uh, no. Oh. oh. Okay, 19, that's not bad. <clears throat> okay. Um. <clears throat> so as you look about a mile off, a little bit above you, uh, kind of southwest or southeast of the main city so like you're, it's, you're gonna hit it before the main city you see a small so stone gazebo uh the brass roof faded over time but reflecting off the sun and it is just like letting you know it's about sunset so you were able to locate the building though that you oh. recognize <laughs> I lead Black Rose to the gazebo. Okay. So as you guys begin to approach, um, you see it looks like a small kind of stone tower that's a little short uh, with the brass roof. It's open to the elements, but it's guarded all around by a brass gate. What we are rolling for initiative, apparently. <laughs> Zai wants to fist fight a, a gazebo. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, <clears throat> you're, you're fine. Anyway, um, as you walk up, though, uh, it's kind of, you have, like, a pathway along the way, but as you walk up, you start to see this dark black gunk, like, slime, almost, uh, or tar, kind of <clears throat> along the stone path. It's so black <clears throat> that it almost, like, has different colors swirling in it it's just very deep and dark um looking at the the small gazebo you also see similar gunk like tar around the pillars and on the ground um what would you guys like to do i make a nature check on said gunk Sure, you can, if you're in, just make, mm. If it's a different check, I'll make it, sure, I don't care. I'm just trying to figure out, I'll let you choose between nature and arcana. Oh, arcana, definitely. <laughs> Six boys. Oh, Are you just, like, checking it out? I'm just checking it out. <clears throat> okay. So you guys start looking around, um, looking at this weird tar substance, and Dr. Rooks, you haven't heard of anything like this before. Oh, you have it. no idea what it is. I drop right. a ball bearing in it. You're gonna okay. You chuck a ball bearing in it and it kind of sinks a little bit, sitting up like part of it. <laughs> just sinks inside of it. Uh, I would like to take my decanter of water, then use the geyser spell to just wash away the gunk. Okay. Um, the geyser, how much damage does that do? Uh, geyser produced 30 gallons of water that gushes forth in a geyser of 30 feet and one foot wide. It does, the target creature must succeed. <clears throat> A DC 13 strength saving throw or take one for bludgeoning damage and fall prone. Okay. Um, so you pull out <clears throat> your decanter of endless water and call so you can target an object that isn't being worn or carried and that weighs more than 200 pounds. The object is either knocked over or pushed 15 feet away from you. Okay, thank you. Um, as you do this, you <clears throat> blow a geyser- blow. You- let off a geyser of water. At... <laughs> Ew. Okay. <laughs> a geyser of water off at the tar like substances that are kind of like on the path and in front of you. Um, after the torrent of water <clears throat> begins to wash away down the side of kind of the small hill you were climbing, it's still there. Oof. Okay. Uh, I mean, do you guys want to take 10 minutes? Because I can ritual cast detect magic. How, how far across is it? 
Um, it's just like little splotches here and there, and then it's oh. kind of covering the front of the gate a little bit. <clears throat> and there's some around the the like posts, and then as you look inside, you see a circular room about twenty feet in no thirty feet in diameter. Uh, that has splotches of this gunk everywhere, too. Can I check it with my poisoner's test? See if it's poison? Uh, sure. Go ahead and make a poison check. Your poisoner's kit check. How do I do that? Although, this would be an intelligence-based check. So, do intelligence and add your proficiency modifier. <clears throat> Up this. Okay, so, what's my proficiency? Plus three? Or... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a I think 18. So. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, that's right. You have a zero in uh, intelligence. Um, you are you like poking at it with your tools? What are you? You're just kind of checking it out. I'm assuming I take a sample and like I test it. So. Okay. You take a sample. Um, without like touching it, like using your tools, being very cautious. You have never seen anything like this before. You get like some hints of poison occasionally, but it's like. Like, you see elements that could be, and then it's, like, gone. Well, damn. I would like to uh, take ten minutes to ritual cast Detect Magic. Okay. Oh, um, it's it's a, I can easily that. avoid it, right? Like, it's just little splotches, you said? Uh, there's, like, piles <laughs> of it here and there. The front gate is kind of covered, like, all around the ground. And how tall is the gate? The gate is, I would say, like, ten feet tall. Can I just Oof. fly over everything? I mean, the, it goes all the way to the top of the roof. It's like a <laughs> like a gate that closes off the whole gazebo. So, you can't, like, fly through. Well, Unless... We're waiting for Dr. Rooks. Uh, it's going to use his time to do some talk and say how great everyone is. Dr. Rooks is so smart and Cass is so sneaky and the element is so street smart and Zylovar is so Zylovar. <laughs> I, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> and I'm giving you all 10, point, 10 temporary head points with my inspiring leader beat. Nice. Fucking sorry, leader. Leader. What? <laughs> He's hey. the leader. He's our leader, guys. Sorry, that's Literary. a very yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. He said I'm street smart. <laughs> uh, is is the gate locked? Oh, can I go in front of the gate? Or um, the yeah, the you can. The stuff is like on the ground. Like you have to awkwardly lean forward to check the gate. Uh, but like barely can really see. But it is locked. Is it though, Zari? You can you can try to make your uh, thieves tools check with disadvantage because you're awkwardly leaning over the gunk. I'll just float over it. Uh, sorry, I none agree. of us have thieves tools. We're all good boys. Uh huh. We're sure. All good like, boys. I'm if pretty I, sure like uh, two of you. If I float over it, do I get rid of the disadvantage? Yes, okay. but you're activating your boots. Well, if I don't activate them. They just happen. yeah 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 whatever. It's Ooh. Uh, Ooh. I don't, what do I add? My dex plus my proficiency? Yeah. Mm. Did so you I take these in Thieves Tools or no? I don't remember. Um, That's six plus three is nine. Okay. Eleven. Um, You haven't picked a lock floating in air before and it's a little weird to you and it kind of throws you off and your lock pick breaks oh. and it falls into the gunk. Oh. And it starts sinking into the gunk. I don't have a lockpick anymore. I guess I got Well, no, you have a ton of lockpicks. I I I'm not the rogue anymore. I don't have a lock. <laughs> I would say you have more. And this is just in the way of us? Is this where we're supposed to go? Or... I mean, as far as what Dr. Rook said, yes. Uh, what do I get with Detect Magic, friend? Okay, this is very much magic. And as you're trying to see what type of magic it is, it's both all and none of them. Oof. Like, 
every once in a while you get like a little blip of divination magic and a little blip of evocation and it's like everything and nothing all at once and you never have seen or heard anything like this well it appears well, that you has stumped us <clears throat> Uh, Rooks shares this with the group. <clears throat> okay. Well, so maybe they're friendly. Maybe maybe they're friendly, Goo. So he's going to use his uh, staff of uh, flowers. Oh my god. And gosh. make a nice little uh, lotus on top of one of the uh, Goo piles. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize I gave you that. <laughs> the uh, lotus really flower funny. starts to like sink slowly into the Goo and then like sticks halfway out. Nothing seems to happen. Uh, Look, it, it likes it. Took, <laughs> it took the flower. Oh my god. I love Snud. Brooks is going to do more experimentation. Uh, he drop. He takes his. He takes his knife out and uh, cuts his finger and drops a. And puts a drop of blood in some of it. Okay. No, Nothing seems to happen. Mm. Now Thanks. I have a face for blood. That'd be hilarious. Uh, you see. Mm. <laughs> it knows your blood now. It's coming oh, God. to you. Oh, God. You honestly, just have to um, avoid it. It's a bit uh, hard, avoid... though. It's kind of fucking hard. I'm not going to take Black Rose into the dungeon. We're just gonna leave our oh wait, sorry. I guess I should. I guess I should ask. Is it a dungeon down there, or is it like an actual pathway somewhere else? Ted is a gazebo. You right? have no idea. You see a gazebo, which is the only thing that Ebony showed you, and mm. you have no idea. You just know that there's a giant city underground. Is it like? Yeah. Is it a metal gate okay. with like slits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can see that. But like, it goes TV all the way to the top, right? Yeah. To be honest, it completely looks like the Skyrim gate things and the, the Dwarven ruins. It looks like one of those with, like, the bronze gate oh, okay. that goes all the way up. Just to give you a little visual. If that's the case, then, Not yeah, having a cart through. would be very useful. Um, really quick, um, Rook says, uh, Snud Zylova, uh, one of you touch it. Wow. Uh, fine. I just go up to it and I stomp it. <laughs> okay. Um. One second. I got death saving throw. I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. It cast yeah. power work kill. <laughs> I cast counter so with my counter attack. So, <laughs> oh, you're gonna love me. I actually did this. Oof, that's six. Okay. So you take that's eight. Still. You take eight points of fire damage. Fire. And then as you like kind of clutch your brain a little bit, it feels weird. You feel like you're being burned. And then you also feel like you're being hit in the, like by your feet um, with something hard. And you take an additional three points of bludgeoning damage. That hurt a lot. Okay. Now we know. I'm not having Black Rose go through that. <clears throat> I feel something burning at my feet, but I don't see no flames. But this fucking hurts. Uh, how how much did you take all together, Ty? I took eleven. Five, yeah. Uh, okay, you're good. <laughs> um, also, just reminding you, you guys have had a long rest since the last fight, in case you didn't temporary already. temporary HP from Candle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, got, you got 10 temporary HP. I'm very happy you casted that. <laughs> you get <laughs> Dr. Uh, Rook's cast level 2 heal on Zolvar to, hit, to heal one hit point. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. As you step That's in it, you do take damage. As much as I could just keep spamming heals on my horse, uh, that would be very wasteful. Can I 
put it in a vial? Sure. You can... It, it's really, really difficult. It's like literally separating tar, but you're able to kind of get a little bit and put it in a vial. Are you using your Poisoner Kits tools to like not touch it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. Stupid. Uh, DM, uh, yeah. can I use my herbalism kit to try to make, um, I'm not uh, sure if this, this is how it works. <laughs> that, that'd be hilarious. Uh, can I make an herbalism kit to, uh, make something that, um, that this thing would be flipping to, so I can essentially just pour something on it and make it, like, move away? Um. I'm not sure you, if that's what the herbalism have... kit for, but still theoretically that could be something that you could try to do but you have no idea what this is or how to counteract it so you have no idea where to start nice make a check to see <laughs> uh sure so roll plus your intelligence plus your proficiency bonus okay cool so that would be 1d20 plus three plus three so 1d20 plus six mm -hmm. okay cool 20. Let's roll it here. Oof, never mind. I, I really thought I was gonna do something. <laughs> yeah, you you have no fucking idea. It's weird. Oh, wait. Okay. wait. One strike casting magic at it, I just realized. No, nobody has. Okay, uh, I'm going to cast um I'm going to cast Sacred Flame. Uh, I'm assume I don't know if this thing gets a deck save. <laughs> Okay. Um, you cast it. What kind of magic or what kind of damage is it? Go ahead and roll. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. Um, you cast Sacred Flame at it. It obviously can't move. Um, but it kind of soaks in the magic and disappears. You have no idea if it was damaged. It doesn't look like there's anything missing. It like uh -oh. made a weird flash and then kind of looked like it was soaking it in and then it was gone great well That's the case. first you give it your blood and then you give it a taste for magic <laughs> uh, anyways uh <laughs> that's the case i am going to attempt and i i'm gonna waste a first level spell i'm going to attempt to cast dis magic spell magic on it dis magic <laughs> dis -magic. Dis -magic. I, I write a diss track uh, <laughs> okay um, will you click the spell for me just so that I can kind of skim it quickly? No problem, one second. I believe it's level one, right? Yeah, it's level one. Mm. Wait, that's detect magic. Yeah. I, I think the spell is level three. Yeah, it's level three. Oof. It's fine. I can I have a pearl of power. Uh <laughs> actually. You know what? Since I'm here, I'm gonna cast it as a fourth level spell. Okay. Um. Can you also roll a d20 for me and add your spell modifier? Uh, my spell oh, modifier would be plus five. Okay. I just put this natural. Uh, I think it's higher than that. I think it's plus eight now. That's my spell attack. Yeah. My spell attack yeah. plus nine. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Do the plus nine. Me too. Okay. Um, you cast Dispel Magic at this thing. It looks like it lights up for a moment. The energy begins to soak in. And then it's still there. Nothing's changed. You guys are overthinking uh, this. Nud takes out a shovel and just shovels it away. A shovel? I was actually going to suggest that, but I didn't think anyone had a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> You take out your shovel and you kind of try to scoop the gunk on the shovel. It's stuck. Shovel is not moving. It's yeah. not moving and your shovel is now like really stuck in there. Roll a strength check to try to pull it out. Okay. Oof. Ow. It it's really stuck in there. You might need a little help or to try again. You're getting your ass kicked by a pile of goo. Just kidding. Can Dr. Rooks try to find another way in? <laughs> well, you guys can, like, get in if the, you get the gate unlocked. You can step over, jump over this pile of goo. Uh, Black Rose just can't come with us. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, to get into this gazebo, you don't know how where the entrance is. All you know is that there's a gazebo. 
that you're kind of peering into. Like I said, Black Rose wouldn't be able to get it. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, yeah. Holo, will, will you Cass? You can roll your second attempt at picking the lock. Okay. Twenty-two yeah. plus my. I mean, you don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. 22 plus 3 is 27. So Okay. 27. Um, so as you're picking the lock, it's an int intricate lock. And not something oh, that... <laughs> okay. Rosario's not... I, I, dropped, I dropped my phone and my food. <laughs> oh, God. I, I didn't, didn't get to the intricate bits. That's a big mood. I have done that so many times. It is wow. a big mood. Um... What do you mean, wow? I said, I'm how? clumsy. Oh, I'm holding my phone and it falls, it falls out of my hands. My like worst fear is like my phone falling through like the little like slit elevators have just all the way bottom to the. Oh my god, that's why oh I have a god. that's why I have um, a pop pocket because. Excuse me, Holo. I didn't ask to be called out like this. Seeing it happen. That's why I have a pop socket because it's easier to hold on to my phone, and also because girl pants never have pockets. Um. Anyway, phones I've aside, been like the worst luck ever. I I have pretty awful luck. Um, um before so, we go in, Rose is essentially just gonna attempt to hide Black Rose somewhere. Okay. Um, it's like sunset. Just warning you guys. And Cass, you, I was describing you unlocking the lock, but <laughs> it's, it's a very intricate lock. It's old made, not something that you've trained on before. But like after a couple, like about a minute of going through it and everything floating over the black goo you managed to get it open okay and you the gazebo gate swings open and you guys are looking in this circular room that's about 30 foot in diameter um you see the it's like there's a lever in the center in the same bronze metal uh can I have everybody, as you're kind of, like, looking around, make an investigation check? Okay. I'm really good at Maybe. That. Maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I love the natural 20 that turns out as a 19. Um, okay. So, as you guys look around, uh, Cass, you're, like, still kind of looking at this lock and trying to, like, memorize it. You don't see anything. But the rest of you notice that there is a seam in a circle around the room on the floor uh, between like this black gunk that you're kind of avoiding and uh -huh. about five feet from the wall that makes a circle in the middle of the room. There's a lever there. Um, the uh -huh. other thing you notice is that kind of along the seam, you see these small holes that ha have what appear to be like a hinge with a bolt on either side so that they could mm -hmm. like come up and fit together. And you also find one there's like three of those and then you also find one gear like laying next to it we gotta put this thing together okay oh wait 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 all right describe that again <laughs> uh <laughs> there's small holes there's three of them around the seam of the circle in the ground um that have what appear to be a hinge like that have a bolt on either side that like when you f pull them together they close and lock um in like this like a couple inches off the ground and next to one of them you see a small gear uh brooks cast sacred flame at the lever so it goes to the other side that that's not how that works there's a lever in the middle of the floor, <laughs> and then there's around the circle around it, there's like a whole circle around it that has like these little slots in the floor. How big are they? Are you, so you're saying Sacred Flame doesn't do anything to lever? Or you're saying I can't see it? No, I'm saying, I mean, you're welcome to cast Sacred Flame at the lever. I'm just saying that I was confused by that. Oh, uh, is the lever pushed towards a certain way? I don't know if Sacred Flame can do that. <laughs> it's a flame. I, why I don't not? Think it would push it, it, anything. It sure, whatever. Okay, you. Oh, wait, no, Sacred Flame doesn't do force damage. My weapon radiant. does force damage. Yeah, radiant. I was really confused. 
um, just see, like the flame that you hit on a lever. So do we just yeah. Like, them? I no, know. I was just confused about the damage it did. Oh, <laughs> anyway. Okay. 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 Uh, Rooks will walk up and pull the lever. Oh, wait, I'm dumb. Well, uh, what did I give in my 22 investigation about the room, aside from that? Um, you see that there is another small gear submerged in gunk. Kind of across the room. That's crazy. Um. <laughs> and then, but... Snud, you're kind of still outside poking around a little bit, and you find another gear submerged in gunk out in the bushes. Uh, oh, so cool. I don't want to be, I don't want to be too mad at me, but maybe the two people with the higher wisdoms should, uh, who actually rely on wisdom safe should pick them up. <laughs> you guys are okay with that. There's also I... a chance, uh, Rooks gets messed up. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why he would know that. <gasps> I mean, listen, if one of you want to do it, that's fine. I'm just trying to do what- But what if Rooks be... wants to pick up that gear, I'm not going to start. <laughs> Elman would like to pick up the gear that's not in gunk. Okay, you pick it up. That was the fake. That's one. all. That was the I don't. I don't. <laughs> that was tragic. I don't see the other, so I do not. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. Let's see what I have in my. I'm gonna call Arthur for him to pick up the gear that's in the gear. Oh, you're uh, <laughs> your fine steed. Yes. Oh, right there, my drink. Yes. Okay. Um, can you make a strength check for Arthur? Sure. Let me just find its stats. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. Uh, how about you guys? How about you focus on somebody else for the moment? Okay. What else are you guys doing? Okay, so two people are working on two of the gears, and there's still a third one. That on the floor, right? That Elman I, just. I out. have it. Okay, so we have so essentially we have all three gears when Nud gets his if yeah. he okay, yes. Cool. And if you get the one that you're looking at out of the gunk. Okay, so. 18. 18, he uh, wobbles over, waddles over, and uh, grabs it and pulls the gear, uh, managing to pull him out, but I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. Okay. Arthur is now dead. <laughs> okay, he takes seven points of psychic damage. Okay. And... Four points of piercing damage. Okay. Um, Arthur is a big boy. He he's fine. He you you just see him kind of like screech a little bit as he gets damaged touching the stuff, but you're not exactly sh like there's no indication in terms of like what happens. Okay. What's wrong, boy? We got the third gear, guys. Who's getting the the second one from the goo inside? Oh, Rooks isn't touching that stuff. <laughs> Rooks, what? Getting the second one. Oh, Rooks is getting it. Well, well, you guys told. Well, you guys told me. Well, you guys told me you'd rather not metagame, so he's not getting it. I said it. If, if Rooks wants to grab it, go ahead. And Stop Rooks him. wouldn't want to grab it, so he's not touching it. Uh, You're all just standing there staring at uh, it. Oh, Zai just looks at Rooks like, well, go get it. Go get it. I don't know why I'll touch it. And then he just looks at you and he says, oh, why must I do everything for you? Why must I heal you when you run into danger? He goes, because if you didn't, you would die. And if I touch that, I might die. So I guess we're both both in a certain place, huh? <sighs> it's okay, guys. I'll pick it up for you. Thank you, Snud. Over and picks up the third because everyone else is a bunch of pussies. Okay, make a strength I'm not check. being stupid like you doesn't make us pussies, but go off. Make a strength oh, check for wow. me to pull. So hostile. Seven. Okay, uh, <laughs> it takes a little bit, but you manage to just barely pull the the gear out. Um, I also need you to make a strength saving throw. Okay. That's why I do. Strength, them dexterity, that's pretty cool. Dean. 
Okay. Um, you take five points of necrotic damage. Okay. And I need you to roll another d20 for me. And you take. Sorry, math is hard right now. Uh, nine <laughs> points of acid oh, damage. God. Damn, Zara. <laughs> So, as you touch this goo, it's weird. It feels like uh, something's coming over you and, like, you have to pull and strength-wise to get out of it, your brain hurting a little bit, and then your fingers stinging from acid as if you touched acid. feel a burning sensation, guys, but I got a gear. <laughs> Goodness, we're just temp head points. A burning sensation. That's what I feel when they stomped on the other one. I think we just killed Zari. No, I'm here. Okay, okay. Oh. I'm just laughing a little bit at you guys. Okay, so Does you my have... gear go on any of the hinges? Yeah. Or circles? What? You fiddle around for a little bit. Make an intelligence check for me. Oh, no. <laughs> Stalman? Oh, nice. Okay. Um, It's really simple for you. You just fit the little gear in there. And you see where there's like other gears lining up down below and then click the little hinges together and lock them together in the center. And it's, you figured it out pretty quick. All right. Well, mine's in. <laughs> that? His, his is in. Is anybody gonna help anybody else? Or are you just gonna stare at them and let them try? <laughs> I mean, oh, I did it so I easily. Hey, I did it so easily. I'm assuming it's just that easy. That, I'm just gonna give the other two gears to Omen since he seems to know what he's doing. Oh, okay. I, I, put, just yeah. I thought he figured the entire thing out. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, just the one. I'll put a different one in. Okay. Uh, very simple. Same thing. And then I'll put the last one in. Yep. Done. And then I'll pull the lever. Lever. We're gonna call it a lever. Oh my gosh. Where's everybody standing in the room right now? I'm at the lever. I'm standing as close as possible to like the most damage I can take. It <laughs> <laughs> is standing next to Elman by the lever. Okay. I believe we decided to call it a lever. <laughs> so, Joey, are you also? Is Zai standing there too? Or my mouth is full. I'd be standing next to Rooks. Okay. Cass, did you come away from investigating the door and are standing close as well, or? He said he wants to be where he's gonna take the most damage, I believe. That's, I... Pro I'd probably be not behind most people. Okay. Um, at the door. At the door? Okay. Um... Because um, mm -hmm. I was just watching them do their thing. Yep, yep, yep. Snod, where are you standing? I'm next to Elman while he was putting the gears in. Okay. So, Elman, you pull the lever the inner seam the inner circle begins to move downward Cass, you're not standing on it and you go like instantly go oh shit and like jump onto the inner circle pretty easily it's moving downward very slowly and you guys begin to descend i thought we were gonna have to start pulling some bs out of our ass to not take fall damage <laughs> <laughs> no, the whole floor is sinking slowly, very, very slowly. About um, to, I was about to start throwing out death wards. <laughs> <laughs> After about sinking down about 10 or so feet, you actually see uh, these slabs of stone begin to move inward above you and close off the top. Oof. So oh, you, you are it's now... <laughs> you are now in pitch black, descending in the dark. Uh, what do I see in my 60 feet of dark vision? It, you're just literally in, like, a circular shaft going down. Okay, cool. Can I, uh, go ahead and make a- can I go ahead and make a perception? Sure. I'll just, uh, light my, uh, hooded lantern. Okay. Oh, wait, actually, guys, I got rid of Guidance and got light, finally. Do you guys want me to <laughs> just cast it? <laughs> I already lit up my lantern. So your light smells useless. 
I, no. I'm sighing because of that. I'm sighing because I realized I never actually changed it to light. It's still guidance. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's really funny. I changed it. Just kidding. I didn't. Um, so you light your lantern and you see stone walls kind of like descending past you. And these weird looking like bronze tracks in the wall. Um, you also see like cables above you that are lowering alongside the bron- like moving alongside the, br- the bronze tracks. It seems to be some weird sort of contraption that, like, moves the stone floor and holds weight. Can I attempt to play a song on the cable? On the cable? Yes. Uh, Oh, electric cable and he just dies. Um, so you touch the cable. It's really hot. Um, you try to pluck at it, but don't Uh, have no. If it was hot, I wouldn't try. Oh, okay. Um, so you see literally a stone. Like, there's nothing else to see other than what I described. You see a stone wall. Oh no! I, sorry, I miss I misspoke. This perception check was for anyone who might be following us. Oh, How before you guys descended. Uh, I don't know. How did they follow us when we when we were fighting bully walks? <laughs> okay, so you you were keeping kind of watch as the everything closed above you. You didn't hear anybody invisible or see anybody like jump in the, for lack of a better term, elevator with you. Uh, so you don't see anything like that. And, but when you guys were, like, kind of dicking around the gazebo, you didn't see anybody else. Or Very sense cool. anything. Listen, we're not getting, sh- we're not getting blindsided on my watch. Still <laughs> <laughs> so so getting blindsided words. five minutes later. I know, right? So, you guys descend for about ten minutes. Just standing awkwardly in here with the hooded lantern. And then it kind of creaks to a stop. You see like a doorway on the other side of the front of the gazebo. Like from where the front of the gazebo was. You see like this doorway that opens up into a hallway that is all stone. So you're standing in the circular room with a doorway to a hallway that's just open. I would like to check for trap. <laughs> okay. Roll an investigation check. Okay. Uh, I walk through the doorway. You see no traps and walk through the doorway. Um, you see before you a hallway that goes for about 30 feet and then uh, stops at a wall that has a seam in it and another lever. A seam? Like a seam. Like down like, the middle of it for a door? Mm. Uh, like around a door, like where a door would be. Another uh, left. Can I make a check in this room for anything? It's literally just a stone hallway that has absolutely nothing else. I would like to Except go knock water. on the wall. Okay. It's stone. Hmm. <laughs> I have stone. No, no response. What color is a stone? It is the gray and feet? black. <laughs> I'll pull the lever while I'm inside. Uh... <laughs> so you knock on the door, or you knock on like the stone wall that kind of looks like a door, Elvin, and you listen, and then all of a sudden it starts moving and going down into the floor. Oh uh, God! I Another figured out one. the secret knock to open the door. <laughs> And you see Cass standing there next to you, holding the lever. I ignore him. Hold the lever, Um, okay. So, you see kind of in front of you, as the wall slides down, Elman, you see kind of what looks to be the remaining parts of a tapestry. It is disintegrated by time, and it has some of the same black gunk on it as well. Uh, Peering around it, you see a rather large rectangular room that has a large square table in the center. Uh, Sorry, not square. Rectangular table in the center. There's chairs and old bookshelves lining the wall. Some of the chairs are, like, knocked over. Some of them are being consumed for lack of better terms into this same black tar there's rubble in the corners um books laying across the ground 
and you see a doorway at the other end of the room um up above you as you're kind of like looking around there's like this chandelier that hangs down with candles all in it are they lit no it is dark in here More so here. yes you do yeah and uh... elman has dark vision as well as snud and dr x Zylo can't see shit um, well, well, Cass has a uh, lantern. That's fair. Um, can I make a check on this room then? Uh, sure. What are you looking for? Uh, just checking out to see if there's anything in here. Okay. And what am I rolling, DM? Uh, perception. Okay. There's chairs. That is, oof, that is a ten. Okay. Um, you're kind of looking around. A little bit before you guys step in you don't seem to see anything in here other than more of that black tar substance wait was there an, there was another door in here yeah across the way and there's a lever well you pulled the lever to you essentially entered through a secret door that was what you assumed to be hiding behind a tapestry and there's another door on the other side. Yeah, that's like a normal door. And it's just a normal door. Oh, okay. I'll check that one for traps. <sighs> You'll check that one for traps? Okay. Um. Okay, you kind of look around the door. It is not locked. It is not trapped. I will do the same secret knock that opened the last door and then open. <laughs> okay. Um, you see before you a hallway that is similar dark stone, but this one is more decorated. So there's remnants of uh, tapestries and there's remnants of, like, there's some old side tables and uh, the things that would hold torches. What are they called? Sconces. Thank you. Sconces. I appreciate that. Scones. Scones. I hate scones. Now I'm hungry. I make really good scones, and now I want them. I live in Texas. We eat kolaches here. That's Ooh. Kolache. Exactly. It's a it's a scone, but it's like meat instead of fruit or whatever stuff oh. you guys. Put. Yeah. Should we put like scones as like a weird thing? Yeah, you <laughs> northerners. Oh my gosh. Um, I forgot to ask this, Zari. Um, I think Rooks would be the only one who cares. Can I make a history check on this dwarven city? Uh, sure. I, uh, I, for I forgot Rooks would I assume someone else was going to do it, but then I realized the group I was in. <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Yes, why are you making an arcana check? I'm trying to think if, like, I knew this place was magical. Monday, you're gonna give him an Arcana check. <laughs> it's not Disneyland. It's not magical. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> I'll cast Minor Illusion to remedy. <laughs> <laughs> of Disneyland. Of Disneyland. Um, Doctor Rooks, from what you know of this city, this city was from before the Great War between the Primordials and the Gods. Uh, and that dwarves used to build cities in here. Uh, it's one of the old great cities. You don't know too much other than you just kind of recognize the name. And you don't necessarily know what happened. Or why it's quote-unquote deserted now. That's fair. Because they got the fuck. Uh, so, okay, so... However, however, just saying, you do know that the, the war between the gods and the primordials, there was a lot of, like, human casualties. So, the city has been deserted since then, so you assume that there was some sort of problem there. Tends to be shocked. <laughs> um, so I'm in an ornately decorated hallway? Yeah, pretty much. It's not, like, ornately, it's just well-ish decorated. And there's a door on the other end of it? Um, there are several doors along the hallway. How how many are we talking? Mm, there's about four along the left side of the hallway, and then uh, you see a little ways down on the right side curtains. 
Oh, did anyone follow me into the hallway? Is it just me? Uh, after seeing, let's say after seeing you didn't get hurt, Rooks would. All right, I'm gonna ask if anyone no, wants to pick a door slash curtain, or if they want to see, or if they want me to use my super effective decision making tactic. What is that? Uh, Do all of them. All right, Kaz has chosen all, all of them. So I'm <laughs> okay. gonna pick a, I'm gonna pick a curtain. Okay. So you open the curtain and Whoa, you... whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just waiting until everyone else is ready to open there. Oh, everybody's opening random doors? What's yeah. what okay. Uh there <laughs> there are four doors and one curtain, so that works out perfectly. Um, so you guys all like all open your shit <laughs> and you see uh for the four of you who are at door are at doors you see that these seem to be some sort of off like old offices uh oh. three of them are small rooms that have just like a bookshelf like an old bookshelf and a de like a pretty simple desk and um you notice a absence of windows but there's like the black tar kind of all throughout. Uh, one of you will say, for the sake of this snud, you open a door and you see a pretty big ornate office that has a nice sized desk and comfy looking armchairs. Uh, several bookshelves line the wall, as well as what appears to be a mannequin made out of some sort of bronze metal. You guys, check this out. There's a cool new stuff here. Um. Elman, as you pull open your curtains, you see that it kind of leads to a, like, balcony that has stairs. Like, it's like kind of like a balcony, and it has stairs going down, but you are standing in a super huge, giant great hall that has, uh, it's like very big. You can't even see to the end of it. It's absolutely pitch black. Uh, even with your dark vision, you can't see very far, but it is huge. It's like two stories tall and you're like standing on the second level and it like has stairs that lead pretty much down to the first level, the floor. Um, you get the sense that there is important things that happened here or speeches or some sort of thing. Um, as you kind of look around, Elman, will you make a perception check for me? Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Um, you notice that there is the similar black tar all kind of throughout. Um, the other thing you notice is that there are pretty like big statues, like twelve to sixteen feet tall, of giant d what look like dwarves standing kind of against the pillars next to you. Uh, there are several chandeliers throughout the room, as far as you can see but it is empty other than the pillars with those giant statues and that you can see. You can't see to the other side of the room and the same black tar substance kind of decorating the stairs. Okay. So, but then you hear Snud call, check out this room, I found a room. Okay. I figured he'd find a room, so I'm not gonna check it out. <laughs> okay. What are you guys all doing? I'll go to Snud's room. Uh, Rooks is honestly just exploring each of the rooms. Okay. Um, for the sake of that, Dr. Rooks, will you make a an investigation check? Uh, I, uh, that. Natural. Uh, 16. Okay. Um, so you start poking through the rooms. You, what languages do you read? Uh, let's see. I read a celestial, common, dwarvish, and elvish. Okay. Um, you see that several of the books are like completely ruined, just rotted beyond recognition. Um, and Assuming that mend mending still does nothing. <laughs> Yeah, mending does not do stuff for rotten rotten books. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah. several other of them are written in, it, it looks like Dwarvish, and you can kind of understand, but it looks like it's some sort of ancient form, like what you know is more modern. 
Um, and so some of the words are a little confusing, but from what you can kind of gain, a lot of these books are on like battle tactics. Um, a lot of them are on like how to care for armor and, and smith different types of armor. Several of them are on like how to fight with certain weapons. Um, you also find a uh, hundred electrum pieces throughout the other three offices that you're poking through. And what does that mean? <laughs> um, electrum pieces are old currency essentially several okay, so... places still still take them electrum and platinum um are the old like ancient currency so several places still take them the same bar oasis you get would probably take them or you'd be able to exchange them there because they poke through ruins such as these pretty often um other people don't always accept them you get the idea that in the claris kingdom that probably wouldn't accept them as much but uh -huh. You manage to find a hundred electrum pieces. They're essentially it's like Yes, I'll add that to my thing. I think it's five to a gold piece. I mean I'm just gonna put a hundred electrum piece pieces in okay. my note. You also find twenty-two platinum pieces between the three rooms and two pieces of uh kind of like a light green gemstone hidden right. in one of the drawers. Let me to my notes, equipment. Do I have? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I looked through my notes. Why do I have six studded leather, five scimitars, five daggers? You guys took them from the fucking bandits. Yeah, I. <laughs> Why? Because we can. Oh, sorry. Let me add the notes. Uh, two faded stones. Um. Uh, how much platinum? Uh. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to like... things. Um, twenty platinum pieces. And my currency. 100, 100 electrum pieces and two weird light green gemstones. Okay, uh, I'm gonna add the electrum to my notes so I can just take that back to town and uh, afterwards I can split it up between the party. Um, that won't go into my thing yet. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, uh, what type of armor uh, does do the dwarf, the dwarven books teach how to make? Is it like ain't it really good armor? Is it like poor armor? Is it just it's, armor like, it's really hard to make out. It would take you several minutes to like kind of pour through it, but you get the sense that it's talking about like the ancient armor that the dwarves used to make. Okay, I'll keep that. I'm gonna keep this because we can probably sell this book to a blacksmith. Okay. A book so, about armor. <laughs> yeah. So add that in there. Book about and armor. Right, and now he's going to go into the room with Snud. Okay, so Snud, you and Cass kind of were checking around this this a little bit more well-off room, this bigger room. Um, you uh, see the giant desk. Um, you see the different bookshelves around. There's like tapestries hanging on the wall that are rotten away and disintegrated. Uh, you also see the bronze-looking mannequin that you get the sense that some sort of armor or, like, clothes would be on this normally, and either they have completely disintegrated away, or it's just not on there anymore. Um, this room, too, is, like, has bits of black tar, the black tar substance here and there, um, but it's pretty easy for you to avoid it. Uh... I'd like to investigate a desk. Okay, go Can ahead and roll an investigation check. Alright. Minus one. <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. Okay, it's a desk. It's it's made out I of a pretty nice wood. Um, it's made out of a pretty nice wood. There's uh, remnants of quills and, like, parchment that is you know, a little not functional anymore. Okay, go ahead, Cass. You said you're investigating as well. Mm -hmm. um, Can I investigate? Sure. No. It's not even here. I mean, I, you didn't say where he was. Would you have sure. been 
chilling with Dr. Rooks, or would you have gone with them? Well, I would have been uh, checking out my room. Rooks would have eventually joined. Okay, so you and Dr. Rooks were the ones who, like, managed to find all that stuff. So, oh, gosh, Cass. Yeah. It's a hardwood desk. Does it have drawers or anything? Yeah, there's several drawers. You kind of open them, check them out, um, see remnants of quills, several old books in a language you don't understand. Don't I understand it, though? Huh? I don't know. Do you speak dwarvish? Is it thieves can? No. Two gold coins says I do understand it. <laughs> you can't take... bribe the DM. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the books. Okay. There's like five in the drawers. There's also like a whole bookshelf or two. There's two bookshelves. Full of books? Um, Full of books. Some of them are like completely rotten. Some of them are consumed by the black tar. And there's several others that are on very, like have various, are kind of like readable that have various words and stuff. Uh, I'll call Kim, Rooks I... over. Okay, I was just about to say. Uh, Rooks comes in, I guess, after hearing two people call him now. Okay. <laughs> Um, so in this, books. In the, uh, you kind of like look around a little bit more. Um, Dr. Rooks, these books are on various subjects similar to the ones that you were kind of perusing that you can tell. Uh, so like a lot about armor, a lot about battle tactics, a lot about like how to fight with weapons and fighting techniques. Um, all of them in the same ancient dwarven. So, are you investigating, and what are you investigating? Well, Rooks, uh, he would just investigate the room, honestly. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Guys, we can't keep doing this. <laughs> it's a natural one as well. That's three, Great boob. desk, man. I've got a super nice desk. Very oh. nice desk, and then there's like a weird, creepy-looking bronze mannequin with no head. I thought you were gonna say there's a weird, creepy-looking man in the corner. I was about to actually be scared. <laughs> there's a man lurking in the corner. Guys, um, yep, uh, Rooks just um adds them to his Are thing you... because he realizes that the Sandbar Oasis would probably be able to uh. Okay, how many books are you taking? Because books weigh a lot. Oh, I didn't know they were big books. I thought they were, like, regular, like, journals. Yeah, but, like, some of them are a little bit thicker, but, like... I'll just put them all in my haversack. Okay. I was about, I was about to say, I didn't, uh, I didn't know what the rules on carrying things were, so I so I just assume Rook's... Uh, con it tells you if you're uh, over-encumbered, so yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, sure. but, I mean... Cass sees you try to, like, think about shoving books in your pack and just comes over and puts them in uh, his... Are you, what what changing yeah. form are you in right now? His? Okay. okay, okay, okay. Just making sure. Um, into his, like, pack. And they just kind of, like, disappear as you do so. So, you now have... Put, uh, you, I would say between the three rooms and Dr. Rook's kind of looking through, are you mainly taking the stuff on armor? Or are you kind uh, of taking a variety? I mean, if there's other stuff, he's gonna take it, because he knows the Sandbar Oasis will probably have more of a place for these books than he will. Okay. Um, I would say between the three rooms, you manage to gather <laughs> about 20-ish books. Uh, Holo put 20 on various dwarven <laughs> military items. I love how I literally have a page in my notes now labeled, labeled various items. There we go. Right? I, I meant like in your haversack notes, but... Do you, I did what you said. You said to put 20 on various dwarven military items. I'm, I, I don't meant know why you're yelling notes, at me. But I'm not yelling at you. I just was why are you yelling? You hit it. it in the roll twenty. I put it in my notes. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, you could see what you can get for those back in the sandbar oasis. Uh, 
your new various items list. <laughs> yeah. Ignore. Okay. That's pretty much all you find. He's saying that and that there's more tone. tone. You don't know. Elman, how long would you have poked around the Great Hall? Uh... Like, would you have entered it? Would you have gone back to see what your friends I would... found? Nah, I feel like I'm in the right place. Okay, um, you're walking down, like, into the hall a little bit. How many books on, uh, ancient war stuff did we get? I would say about 20. Books... Heck did that go? I'm losing all my notes. There it is. There it is. Okay. Um, okay. So, Elman, you kind of walk into this room a little bit. You do see that there is uh, some of that gunk on the ground. Um, but you easily avoid it. Mm. However... As you kind of get down a little bit, are you just walking in? Are you stealthing? Are you just like keeping eye watch? What are you? How are you approaching it? Uh, I'm gonna go stealthily and not go very far. Just kind of. Okay. So roll for stealth then. Roll for Arcana. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes, random arcana check. You know it. No, I was kidding. <laughs> Listen, I just follow the DMs. <laughs> oh Thank you for following my instructions. Ca Cass, why are you stealthing? You're not there. You don't know I'm stealthing. <laughs> I'll see you. I'm the DM. I better know. <laughs> okay, give me one second. Okay, um, so Elman, as you kind of walk down the stairs a little bit, you see something a little weird. Um, you hear a whirring noise, yeah. like at the far end of the room. What in the unholy oh, hell? Exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. Um, you hear a whirring noise kind of across the room. Um, you don't like see anything it's a little too far out of your sight but then after like a second as you kind of stop and listen uh you see a glow about 16 feet off the ground uh two glows like right next to each other they kind of remind you of eyes pennywise oh damn it and <laughs> it's like a dark it's like a dark burgundy color we're fucked Oh. I will stealth back up. Okay. <clears throat> you stealth back up the stairs and see your your companions kind of poking around haphazardly in a larger office. Uh, Dr. Rook's handing cast books that he's like shoving and are completely disappearing into this haversack. And do I know anything about... Uh, dwarven contract. I guess. Make, okay. Make a history check. Oh, so on. Dang it. Um, <laughs> very dang thing, a 20. Okay, so that's a 20 history check. You know that dwarves, um, especially ancient dwarves and the stories that you've heard and have sung about them, or heard sung about them, um, they used to build these giant magical golems or different types of constructs. Um, some of them metal, some of them made out of stone. Uh, all of them enchanted with magic so that they could come to life and would either help defend or would help fight uh, and al things along those lines. How do you do uh, this type of things to us, Sorry. <laughs> I well, <laughs> I would like to go to my compatriots and tell them that I think there's a dwarven construct below. Like a wolf watch? Uh, I'm, 
if I'm not mistaking, much bigger than a war forge, but sort. What's a war forge? Don't you remember that robot that brought you a letter once? But he delivered letters. He wasn't made for war. Uh, I just good. think that's what that's they're just called. A name. That's just a name, Cass. Oh. Well, let's go. <laughs> Maybe it's friendly. Well, let's go beat it up. Oh. Elman, are you poking around this room at all? Mm, yeah, sure. Since I'm here and you clearly want me to. It's a really uh, nice desk. Yeah, <laughs> I see a nice desk too. <laughs> I don't really think, nice guys. I don't just think I rolled an investigation check. Do you want to, or would you be lurking in the corner? Sorry, really wants us to find some in this room, and you want to not find it, despite her. <laughs> no, I'm just asking because it's all of our join us. Because I never rolled yeah. an investigation okay. check, and he was kind of poking around all the rooms. All of our join us in finding some nice desks. Hey. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. What do I find? What do I find? That was natural twenty. Oh my what, god. What do I find? My god, what he found this. Three in investigation. Yeah. Are you proficient in investigation? Why am I proficient? Because I'm just it, it no, says right are. here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so Zai, you like see these dingle bats poking around the room and not really finding anything. Um the mannequin's really curious to you. And you like start looking at it. Wondering what type of armor could used to be on it, um, and see that there's a weird compartment in the back. Right on his ass. Uh, Does no, he have junk his... in his trunk? <laughs> on the back, like the mid back of the mannequin. Okay, I open up that so... compartment, or I okay pick it up you... and then bust it on the floor. <laughs> okay, that's one way to do it. Um, the metal just dents. It's dwarven and very well made. Well, shit. Rooks, come open, come open this for me. It's right there. And he points to the compartment. <laughs> oh. I didn't notice that. Uh, how, how, do, how does one open this, DM? <laughs> uh, it's just like, it looks like a little seam. And you, like, kind of are running your fingers along it. And it pushes in a little bit and, like, clicks out. Nice. What's in it? Uh, you see a ring, as well as a small pouch that has more money in it. So, uh, uh, another 200 Electrum pieces and 20 Platinum pieces. So this was Speaking of, uh, thank, thank you for reminding me. I need to write down these Electrum pieces so we can trade them in at some point. We, fa we found it. We found the thing that she wanted us to find. Mm -hmm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Zai, the other thing that, like, as you watch Dr. Rooks do this, you kind of lean back against the bookshelf behind you, and as you do so, you notice that there's a weird, like, another weird seam right by your hand, and you kind of, like, bump it a little bit, and it in indents, and then the whole bookcase slides to the side. Uh, really quick, how much Electrum do we have overall again? Uh... 100 plus 200, 300. Okay, and then three. you have a total of 40 platinum pieces. Uh, what? And two weird light green gems. Alright. Uh, oh yeah, I got that. Um, uh, I want you to know I took the other uh, 20 platinum for myself. <laughs> um, because he's gonna divide them. Anyways, um, how many of us are there? Uh, so minus me, that's like one, two, Three, four. Uh, he hands five platinum to everyone else. Sweet, but but rooks. I I found the room. So Zai, as the whole oh. thing slides to the side, you see a um. Hold on, sorry, sorry. I'm just looking at something. You see, like stairs that wind upwards in a small dark passage. Uh, Elman, when you get a chance, can you cast Identify on this ring to make sure it's not cursed? Uh, absolutely. So Zai is just like, but room, or, oh, whatever, I'll go up by myself then. 
Okay, so you're going up. Element, are yeah. you casting Identify, or are you Ritual casting? Are you waiting? If we have time, I'll Ritual cast. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna regular cast. Okay. Um, I would tell say that you guys would need to be like, like you would need a solid ten minutes of sitting and concentrating on that. So you probably couldn't be doing it if every, like, unless you choose to sit and do that. I was about to say, Rooks would tell if Elman says he's gonna do it. Rooks would tell Zai to wait. Okay, if they're waiting, I'll do it. Okay, so you, uh, you guys all kind of like continue to poke around the office, not finding much else. Um, and as Elman ritual casts identify, this is a ring of mind shielding. Oh shit. <laughs> That's bit, that's pretty good. <laughs> Don't do it. It's cursed. That's why Zari wanted us to have it. It's I, not cursed. I, I, far as I, can tell. I light up my torch and I head up the stairs. All right. We literally. Um. Okay. So after Elman like stands back up. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. What are you? Are you just holding on to the ring, Elman? Is anybody? Oh no! When I stand yeah, up, I'll, I'll uh, I'll, I'll toss it back to Rooks and say it's a me, uh, ring of mine. Oh, uh, what does it do? Mm, won't let divination spells read your thoughts. I believe. I'm kind of just guessing though, because I didn't get a sheet. Hold on. <laughs> you just print out a sheet after you do identify. <laughs> Okay, well, wearing this ring, you're immune to magic that allows creatures to read your thoughts, determine whether you're lying, know your alignment, or your, know your creature type. Creatures can telepathically communicate with you only if you allow it. You can use an action to cause the ring to become invisible until you use another action to make the ring visible until you, root, until you remove the ring or until you die. If you die wearing this ring, your soul enters it unless it already houses a soul. You can remain in the ring or depart for the afterlife. As long as your soul is in the ring, you can telepathically communicate with any creature wearing it. A wearer can't prevent this telepathic communication. Yeah, oh. I'm sure nothing can go Wait, wrong. So, Wait, so, um, I still cast Revivify if someone had this ring and they put their soul in it? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't, do you think you need a body for Revivify? Yeah, you need a body. Oh, their soul goes in. Yeah. It's so, the only I... way that, like, if you can't like, the way I would look at it is if you can't quite resurrect somebody, their soul can go in there, which would probably make it easier to do a resurrection ritual. Uh, but... Um, is but, this attunement? It is attunement. I was gonna say, this is a cool weapon, but I don't think Rooks... Is really Rooks weapon. could need it, but literally anyone else also could need it. I'm not gonna say it, but this is clearly a snud item. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you make a fair point. <laughs> I don't know who do you you guys could hold on to it. You could sell it. Whoever you think needs a ring to help protect your thoughts. Who <clears throat> has very important thoughts that cannot be shared? <laughs> Thinking yeah, of yeah. everyone here, who has the most to lose if someone read our mind? Rooks. Probably Elman. That's uh, a very fair point. I wouldn't put it on. I'm not gonna I wouldn't eat. You cut out what? I wouldn't use it. Hmm. Listen, I'll take it. Uh, I just, this seems like a very situational item, and I already have three items attuned. Well, then I'll take it. Okay, cool. All right, ring of my protection, you said? Had it on one of my other characters in our campaign, it was awesome. I kept fucking with the DM because most of his creatures had my control. <laughs> I didn't realize if we're up against a mind flare, it could be very useful for us. I just realized Snuts the tank, it would be very useful for him to have this. Mm-hmm. Alright, so let me cross off weird ring uh, from the various Weird ring. 
I love your notes. There's already a soul on it, guys. Like, oh, Holo, uh, you <laughs> went, went offline. God damn it. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I... I just, like, clicked over and saw. Right. Uh, we should probably keep going up because Zai's in front of us. Yep. Yeah, because Zai is, like, he's getting out of there. Okay, so you guys begin to walk up the the staircase. I think that we should take a break quickly, because it's been like an hour and a half, uh, and this looks like a good spot, and then we can see what you find up the staircase in a moment. Cool. All right. Okie dokie. So we will be back in about ten minutes. Sweet.
And we are back. Okay. So the group was just exploring the uh, secret passageway, the staircase they found behind a bookshelf in the, what Dr. Rooks probably would have figured out to be whatever, like, this was probably some sort of military base area building, and this was probably the captain's quarters. Um, but you guys kind of walk up the stairs. Zai, you're just leading the way. Okay. Yeah. Um, I make a perception as we're going up. Uh, sure. Zai is kind of filling the whole corridor because it was made for dwarves. But sure. Looking out for any dangers, essentially. Nice. Okay. Except, by the way. Um, uh, yes, that's a 27. So as you guys are walking up the stairs, the rest of the party, are you guys following too? Yep. Okay. So, uh, Zai, you walk up. It's like a circular staircase, kind of small in the wall. Um, it's a little cramped for you. Dr. Rooks, you don't see anything of danger, any traps or anything. Um, but you guys make it up to the top. It's just one, like, set of stairs. And there is a, a lever on the inside, and like a stone wall. Oh, I'll pull the lever. Okay, so you pull the lever, and what can possibly go wrong? And yeah. the the door, uh, the wall, like slides to the side, and you guys see before you a kind of nice bedroom um that's pretty big there's a giant like stone four poster bed that ha like carved out of stone that has uh the remnants of a mattress on it it looks like the room was kind of left in a hurry uh there's disintegrated cloth tapestries on the walls and uh old mugs like around the room a little bit and it looks like uh, there is the black gunk in this room as well, uh, but it looks like it was kind of a secret passageway to get from whoever's bedroom this was down to the captain's office. Hmm. Probably the captain, more than likely, because that makes the most sense. Uh, so you guys are kind of looking around this room. It looks like they're, like the bed was not made. The, whatever was left of the blanket is across the floor. So, and then the a door to the hallway on the other side of the room. Nothing else in the room? Well, what are you, are you guys poking around? I think we should. I am. I'm gonna check for traps. Okay. Uh, cast check for traps. Go for it. Investigation. Nine. Everything's okay. fine. You see no traps. No traps. I guess Rook is going to poke around the room. Okay. Whoever's poking around the room, investigation check. I'm going to try to open the door. Okay, 19. That's good. Okay. Um, the door is locked from the inside, but it's very easy for you to just, like, unlock the door because the deadbolt's right there. Uh, and you open the door and it looks out into very similar hallways down below. Uh, the rest of you, as you are poking around the room, uh, Dr. Rooks, you find a dwarven dagger underneath one of the, what was left of a pillow. Um, but as you guys kind of like poke around, you don't see anything else really of use in this room. Is it just like a regular dagger? It's made a little bit nicer, and the metal's different. Nicer, as in it's more it's more powerful. No. Oh, okay, cool. Then giving it to um, ass won't do anything. Um, okay, it's cool. just like Add a it. dagger. That's you think that since it's like an of an old make or and of a different metal that it might fetch a higher price, but it functions the same as a dagger. Okay, cool. Right, cool. Adding it to the uh, various items. I'm gonna stealth on ahead. Okay. Um. So, Cass, you're stealthing down this hallway. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you see this hallway has openings, um, like windows in the stone on the other side of the room from the doors that you kind of like look through into a pitch, absolutely pitch black room. Um, that looks mm -hmm. very big from what you can tell. And then put a lantern to it to see. Okay, uh, you can barely see down below since you're like two store or a story above, but the same like kind of landing area that Elman was on earlier, uh, that has the black gunk on it. Hmm. I'm gonna go on ahead. Okay, so the other things in the hallway, you see two other doors. And then at the end of the hallway, kind of behind you, um, you see another door. So like two doors in front of you uh, against the wall, similar to where the the area that you're in, that you came out of. And then one behind you that's on the like end of the hallway. Open up the one in the end of the hallway. Okay. Um, you look into this room. It is absolutely untouched there's no black tar in the room um the some of the like tapestry look tapestries look like they may have disintegrated over time a little bit but uh, the bed is made perfectly um you see like a nice looking desk and several bookshelves with books that you can't read, a huge fireplace with a nice looking, um, like, kind of mug sitting there. Um, I'm gonna check for traps. Okay, make an investigation check. I'm also gonna, if I can at the same time, see if, like, someone's been here recently, or someone's been taking care of it. Okay. Um, you see, there's dust on the ground. There are no traps, but you do see that there are no footprints in the dust at all. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you see is carved around the doorway are weird ruins. Ruins? Ruins, yeah. Like writing? Yes. Uh, would you like to make an arcana check? No, I would not. I'm not... Proficient in Arcana, so I don't know why I would make one. That's fair. I am literally holding my face in my hands right now. <laughs> doing Arcana check? Um. No. No, we're not doing Arcana checks. Did somebody say Arcana check? You're not there! <laughs> Unless yeah. you followed Cass. Well, Cass did, did still play. Yeah. I heard Arcana, and I'm like, all right, everyone rolls Arcana. Are you yeah. poking around the room yeah, a little bit? I'm going to check it out. Okay, so you poke around the room. Um, You open up the wardrobe and see very nice-looking robes, and as you kind of, like, touch them a little bit, they almost disintegrate in your hands. They look to be made of someone of shorter stature, and they just are old, very old, but very finely made. Um. You will you make a uh, investigation check in the wardrobe for me? Six. Okay. Uh Natural one. You pretty easily managed to find uh two pieces of like digging around in the the like as your the clothes is disintegrating. You managed to find two pieces of nicer looking gems um that are light green. So, if you want to write that down. You're not sure what they are. Oh my gosh, you don't need to write it down in here. I just meant for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, as you kind of poke around a little bit more, you see a... The, like, things that stick out to you are the... There's an onyx dog figurine by the animal... Or, by the fireplace that's kind of sitting there about three feet high and then uh sitting in the next to the sitting chairs is a nice looking brass mug 
that has some sort of like it's actually the same color as the gems you found in like little baby ones of those in the mug um i'll take the dog and i'll st stuff it in the pillow or something okay uh there's not yeah i'd say the pillows are like right? super super disintegrated okay. but yeah and then and there's a mug so it's like it yeah gems. it's like a, a brass mug that has gems in it dump the gems out no like inlaid in the mug oh i see sorry So are you just taking the mug? I'm gonna stuff it in a pillow too. Okay. <laughs> and uh, like a pillowcase. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then are hold on. I'm trying to find something for myself. I wrote it down, but I did not do it right. Apparently. Don't have um, one put an item in a pillowcase. Yeah, totally. Okay, <laughs> so as you, the only like weird thing to you is the runes around the door, and then the fact that the room does not have the familiar black tar substance in it. Okay, I'll head back to to Rook. Okay. So you walk back into the room. They're still poking around the, the captain's room a little bit. Uh, I think there may be a way to protect ourselves from the black slime sludge thing. All right, I'm listening. Uh, there's a room that's untouched over there, down the hall. Hmm. All right, I guess we should probably go check it out. There we go. Okay, sorry. Um, so you guys go down to the other room, and yes. you see the same thing that I kind of described before. Um, the cast points out the runes by the door, and so anybody proficient in Arcana who wants to kind of take a look at it. Then I'll check the other two rooms that I skipped while they're doing that. Okay, will you make an investigation check for those two rooms? Sure. Oof. Oh. Oh, I don't see a thing. 18. Okay, uh, between the two rooms, you manage to find, like, kind of poking around a little bit, uh, a couple sacks of Electrum pieces, about 200 in total. Yeah, Dr. Rooks, these are weird-looking arcane symbols. You have no idea what they are. Oof. Elman, Oof. did you want to look? I'm not proficient in arcane. You're a bard. You're, you're jack-of-all-trades. You're allowed to. Oh, okay. No, Cass. No. <laughs> you're not allowed to. <laughs> um... Elman, you're kind of looking around this. You don't know what they say, but you get the sense that they're runes of protection and order. Hmm. Interesting. How many runes are worth there? Rune? Rooms? Rooms. The how much how many symbols were there on the wall? Uh, there are three going up each side of the wall, and then two over the top. Are they, like, written into the stone? Or? They're carved into the stone. Oh, okay. Uh, what do runes of protection and order do? Uh, they're just, like, general protective wards. Not, like, anything super specific in D&D &D terms. <laughs> Interesting. So it's not, like, Elman, it's not a modern magic. It's something a little bit older that you've, like, heard of before, but you don't know how to do it yourself. I gotcha. Okay. 
Um, so you guys are kind of poking around this room a little bit. Okay, go ahead and make investigation checks. Okay. All right, I got a 10. I got a 15 from Elman. Anybody else looking? Is there anybody else what? Looking. Poking around the room. Blam. And the seven. Okay. Blam. Um... <laughs> making an arcana check um okay so elman as you're kind of poking around a little bit you notice at the bottom of the wardrobe in between like a bunch of old disintegrated clothes uh you manage to find a dark green pretty big gem but as you guys are like poking around that's about it there's not much in this room Okay, I'll just slip it in the pocket, I guess. They don't Kay. find my pillows? Oh, I thought you took them with you. No, I just left them there. Oh, you find two pillows sitting by the fireplace, the one that has a kind of onyx-colored statuette of a dog and another that contains a brass mug with uh, inlay of a dark, or a light green gem. An emerald? Okay, I'll, I'll take the pillowcases and give them to Kaz and say, here, hold. <laughs> okay. So into the haversack they go? The haversack. Sure. Or are you just holding yeah, I don't think they could fit in the haversack. If it's, oh, if it's just the a pillowcase, hacky I guess it can fit. Yeah, it's I was a, like... A dog and a gem cup. Yeah. Um, okie dokie. So, you get the sense that whoever stayed in this room didn't stay in it very often, and that it was kind of like a last resort type thing. Hmm. What do I, what do I see with my seven? There's a bed. Rooks, there's a bed. I'm gonna take a nap. So this is a dead end? Would be the yeah. Rest of yeah. Hmm. What did you say? Uh, he Sorry. said this would be the worst time to do that. Shh. There's always time for a good nap. Just saying, when you guys walked, came down in here, it was like sunset, so right now it's like 10 p.m. for you. So if you wanted to take a nap, you very well could. <laughs> Uh, you just don't know how well it would work. There's only one bed, so we have to take like five shifts. <laughs> oh, no. We could sleep on the floor. We also have oh. bed roll. That's a thing. I do have a bed I roll. Have a... <laughs> I don't think I have a. I don't have a fucking. I could give you my bed roll. Um, I'm pretty sure you would have a bed roll. Just saying. Sign my inventory, sorry. Well, then add it to your inventory because you would have bought that. I wouldn't have bought that. You would have just sleep on the floor, wrapped in, on the ground, wrapped in a blanket. Do you even have a blanket in your inventory? I don't inventory? have a blanket in my inventory, so I don't have a You just Wait, sleep on the ground. You just got pillows, though. You just got pillows. Yeah, you did just get pillows. I have pillows. They're very gross. And I'm smell like... like a rock. <laughs> a rock in the pillowcase. Poor Cass has been just sleeping on the cold, hard ground this whole time. That's what he gets. Did you guys want to take a long rest, or do you just want to keep going? We could take a long rest. I'm down. Seems like the safest place to do it since we have the whatever to protect us. We got a whatever to protect us. Great. Very cool. Uh, are we doing shifts or? Do we need shifts? We need fine down here. Nothing to worry All right, about. Right. Uh, does this big green gym seem magical? Um, are you casting identify, or you just want to like make an arcana check? I'll do an arcana check. Okay. Natural one. No. Uh, it doesn't? It does not. Oh, okay, yeah, then I'm not going to cast Identify on it. Okay. I mean, you could ask your resident jeweler what it is and if it's worth anything. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, Snud, do you... Uh... Oh, wow. I forget. <laughs> it's not the jeweler. Snud, do you uh, want the... I could check it out. 
Well, you I'm just done. Okay, oh, go ahead. Then... Not the two green gems. Okay. All right. So plus one dex. We said it was a dex modifier. Uh, this one would be intelligence. Yes. Oh, let's check. Plus your uh, proficiency bonus. It would be a strength modifier. Why? Because he's gonna crush him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Really quick. Uh, Rooks also gives him the two faded gems that he found. Okay. Dope. Wow. It is very easy for you. You recognize these immediately. Um, you are holding four jade. I believe. Wait, hold on. Let me check. Let me make sure that's what I actually legit wrote. Eh. I actually hand wrote notes this time, and I'm having trouble finding stuff. Take control F. Wait. <laughs> I know. Literally, I was like, I I'm struggling. Where is it? Uh... No, 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 no. You find two Jasper. Uh, the ones that Dr. Rooks handed you are Jasper pieces. Um, there are two Jade pieces, and the big one that Elman had is a Periodot. Peridot. 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 Is that? I'm, I'm sorry. That's how my Peridot. sister is. Hamlock. Peridot. 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 No, that's just like a Zari fucking it up, not like... Yeah, anyway. Um... Um, you two just keep your gems for yourself. I just need to know whether I need to add it to the uh, various items or not. I just how keep track of it? Yeah, however you guys want to do that. Uh, Snud, you you also recognize if you caught a glimpse of the brass mug at all that it has a jade inlay. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, it's uh, a very pretty mug. Thing about it is, uh, various items are literally just things that Rooks is going to sell and then split the money with. But if you guys have personal items, it'd be best for you to keep them because I'm not gonna remember that they're for you specifically. Also, I know that you guys like to keep items when you find them. That's why I'm asking you out of character. Do you do you have Rooks uh, list them or not? Well, I would like to have the mug if it's uh, okay with you guys, but. It's mine. Yeah. I've already taken the ring, so I don't want to be greedy. Uh, I don't really, I don't care for any of that. So, yeah, I don't care. All okay. right. So, is Rooks adding the gems you guys found or no? Yes. All right. Cool. What were they? Sorry. Uh, two Jasper, two okay. Jade. Okay. Uh, just to help my brain later, um, Jade is worth a hundred each and the uh, peridot is 500 jesus and the jasper is 50 so there are 50 gold pieces each nice just to help me later you later yes I just the prices next to all of them um and then are you keeping the mug then, Snud? Well, if it's okay with Elman. Uh, yeah. yeah is it okay with Elman? I don't. <laughs> Cass, was, Cass was the one who had it. Elman, of course. I have to ask your permission before. No, I, I, I found it. Remember, I handed it to Cass to hold. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm fine with it. I deleted you. it from yeah. my inventory, so. I'll, I'll use Okay, well, then I'll, I'll take the mug if nobody else wants it. Okay, Snud, uh, just to help my brain, this is worth 250 gold pieces. But it's worth extra because it's in a pillowcase? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's worth one copper extra if you include the pillowcase in the deal. <laughs> yeah. Yes, one copper extra. It's an ancient extra. pillowcase. Is that 250 uh -huh. gold or 200? 250 gold and one copper piece. For the pillowcase. What? I can get 300 at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it would be a uh, tankard of sobriety. A what? A tankard what? of sobriety. What's that? It's, uh, it's a tankard that so sobers you up, Zari. Basically, I uh, whatever know. alcohol you drink from it, you cannot get drunk from it. Amazing. That sounds like... Ugh. You just turn into the Flash. Okay, anyway. That I could challenge Zelvar to a drinking game and I'll never lose. 
That's fantastic. I didn't know that that was an item, but now I know. No, it's just and like then we die of alcohol poisoning. Fancy art piece. Okay. Well, if it's just a regular mug, I'll give it to Rosario so he could divvy, divvy it up later on. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Okay. So put jade inlay brass mug, 250 gold pieces. A mug, 250. Uh, yeah. Oh, really quick, I meant to ask you this before because I'm gonna have to tally all this stuff up when we're done. Uh, mm -hmm. were the was all the stuff we stole from the bandits was that good quality stuff or like bad quality? From the what? Uh, the bandits. Uh, it's like decent quality stuff. Okay, so regular price, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll look it up. You can look everything up. It's fine. Um, oh, thank you. Okay, okay. So, what are you guys doing? We're not taking a watch. We're sleeping. Not taking uh, a watch. Yeah, I feel like that should be a group conversation. Before yeah, it we was just a group conversation. Back. You asked us, and I said <laughs> we don't need to, and you said, said yes. We don't need to. Yeah, and you agreed. Brooks, I was jokingly agreeing because nah, that's a that was a serious Brooks. agreement. Hey, but Brooks, you have a sense of humor. That's fishy, man. Yeah, I've Brooks. never heard Brooks tell a joke before. Brooks, would you feel safer if I cuddled you? <laughs> I, I cannot think of anything that would be worse. <laughs> Maybe you should cuddle him with while doing horse noises. <laughs> why are horse noises? Would it be why else, Zari? <laughs> Giddy up, horsey. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, God. <laughs> I, too, enjoy horse noises. <laughs> what are we here today, folks? <laughs> I was being facetious, but okay. Nay. I'm very uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> so no watch. What are you who's who's doing what? We're all sleeping. Okay. No watch. No watch. Brooks is going to lock the door to that room to the room first. Does it have a lock? We're all gonna yeah. die. <laughs> it does have a lock. Okay, is say, it like, is it a key lock or is it like a bolt lock? It's like a bolt lock. Okay, well, can someone like double, triple, quadruple check to see if the door's locked? It's locked. Okay, sorry. I'm, no, you no just said you were double checking and I'm the PM and I am confirming that it is locked. Do you want me to say it three times? I've said it like four by now. Are, are the sprinklers it's on? Me? Sassy? Never. We leave the sprinklers on? Oh my god. Okay, so you guys are sleeping. Yeah, I'll try yeah. to set up some type of ham hock. Ham <laughs> 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 it was not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of these days, guys. <laughs> if we ever hang out in person, I'm punching like half of you. Oh, no. Okay. I didn't even do it. Ro Rosario's not gonna you. be like, why me? <laughs> not you, Rosario. You're amazing. Why? I love you. You're, you're vaguely as annoying as the rest of us. Stop. Nice. I, I respect the joke. <laughs> Mainly those two. Those two will be punched. Okay. Anyways, so you guys uh, spread out on the ground, or some of you on the bed, I guess. Uh, Cass apparently sleeping very sadly on the ground. Just cold stone. No no bedroll. Just really depressing to me. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're trying to make me feel bad, I don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just saying it's fucking weird that I don't know. I don't know. Um, they brought pillows. He can use them. <laughs> they're very musty and smell like gross. Yeah, I'm not gonna use those ancient pillows. Hundred years old <laughs> pillows that like kind of disintegrate in your hands a little bit. Um, okay, the night passes. No problems. Or at least you think that it's been several hours and you're not quite sure if it's night or day, but 
you kind of deem that it's time but to Rooks wake knows. up. No, Rooks only knows because of the sun's location. Rook always knows. Rooks, time. where's the sun? Where's the sun? It's it's Don't. point vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you you guess that it's around eight a.m. in the morning. It, it's like not as easy to do when you're below ground, but you get a general sense. All right, uh, I have the cost of most of our stuff down. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. You can track. You have a mind that you can track time, direction, and detail with uncanny precision. Okay, fine. It's eight o six in the morning. You're welcome. Thanks. Brooks, ask the voice in your head what time it. Quivering dagger. That's not <laughs> uh, how that works. <laughs> Cool. Oh. Only three items I don't have costs for. Oh my uh, god. Those will probably be for um someone. That will probably be for uh the people we sell them to. I'm sorry, I was distracted with that while we were resting. <laughs> okay. So you have taken a long rest. Did you prepare all your spells? Me? It, I already told you guys, I picked spells that are for the general situation. We don't know what we're running into here. <laughs> okay. So the morning is yours. What are you doing? I am going to give a door. pep talk to everybody for 10 minutes and give them our 10 temporary hit points. Okay, so while you guys munch on rations, Snud pep talks you, would you like to tell us a little bit about what your pep talk would be? Yeah, we're going to make the most awesome breakfast and then we're going to eat it and it's going to be so good and, and our bellies are going to be full and, and yeah, it's going to be awesome. You know, food talks also, like, do inspire me. I personally would get temporary hit points from that. The DM gets 10 hit- 10 temporary yes! hit points. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I'm gonna divvy it up among all the things you're gonna fight! No, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was a joke. If it was, like, 10 things, they'd all get, like, one extra. <laughs> I know, yeah, right. So it's, uh, how many HP candle? 13? 10? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, my, it's my pal. It's my level plus my charisma modifier. So in total, oh, cool. right now. Lovely. Alrighty, what are you guys doing? It's exploring more, right? In the small ash room. In the small room, or are you heading back out? We should just head back out and then go down that other hall we didn't explore, the one with the very clear uh, boss. I was kind of half expecting the bed to be a mimic, to be honest. I wouldn't give me ideas. <laughs> Do it. You no balls, no balls. What the fuck? I'll sneak on ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So you guys find at the end of the hallway another like staircase that leads back down to the second level. Um. Cass, will you roll your stealth check? The rest of you, how are you? Yeah. Dope. Okay. And the rest of you, are you guys going... The only room that you guys haven't really checked out yet is the Great Hall. Okay, we'll check the Great Hall. I'll check the Great Hall. Isn't that where, um... Wait, the Great Hall. That's where Elman saw the, like, weird glowing eyes. I'm sorry, I thought that's where um Cass was going to check, right? That's where I was. I thought that's where I was going to. I thought that's the way we had to go. Oh, okay. It's pitch... Sake, Cass, it's it? pitch black in there. You I can't see. Lantern. Yeah, but, okay. It's really hard to stealth with a hood lantern. Well, the Just whole saying. point of it is that I could uh, do it up to five feet, I think. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Good to know. I As will an action, you can lower the hood, reducing the light to a dim light in a five-foot radius. Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, so is just Cass kind of poking around the Great Hall? No, I'll go. Are you go. stealthing? Uh, no, I just light my torch and I just go. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to keep up with me. Uh, I never don't, said I was, I never don't know said where I was keeping up went. with you. I was just gonna go. You don't know where Cass went, but you walk into the Great Hall uh, with your torch, and you see kind of around you, it is kind of covered in pretty big splotches of that black tar-like substance, the sludge. 
Um, and you avoid it, and then you also do see the golems, or the statues that Elman described might be golems, because he saw one kind of light up and move a little bit. Um, but you see one kind of to your left uh, as you walk down the stairs. A giant, like, 16-foot statue. You can't see a ton, but from what you can tell, it looks like a you see, like, up to the hips of this giant statue. Um, mm. And as you walk down the stairs and are kind of looking at it and staring at it, the eyes begin to glow. A dark burgundy. Uh-huh. And Roll initiative? Yeah, roll initiative. Sweet. So far, so good. Is this a two of them? Where am I? Uh, here, do you want to see? Yeah, I do want to see. Oof, this is uh, not a good situation. You guys are like, oh, I'm moving shit around. You guys are like right here. And, uh, Zai, you're like right here. Okay, hold on. Let me Sorry, put what? this on the screen. Cass, is- I would- Cass, I would say you've been, you kind of were making your way around the room and you're like over here somewhere. I'm right here. Yeah. Let me put my token there. I'm right here. Cool. And where's the thing with eyes? The one right next to Zai. This thing right here? This one in front here? Yeah. And we see into the room? Uh, about 60 feet. And it's like down the stairs. So can we, so is it like a Gorgon situation where we can't see where's what's happening with Zai right now? I mean, I'm pretty sure you would hear this giant stone thing like detach from the pillar and like, let out Zai? a loud roar. Yes, you can kind of see. Yeah, you can see Zai. I'd say so. Right, I just need to know where to get my when to be able to get my spells off. It's like okay, Gorgon from Beauty and the Beast. Um, so, for the sake of this, I need y'all to roll initiative. How do I do that? Wait, no, I got do I have to, like, click on my token before I roll initiative, sorry, or, like... Yes, please click on your token before you roll initiative. Okay. Click on your token, then roll on your character sheet. Nine. Hold on, I need to get back into the game. I left by accident. Very cool. Zai, you still didn't pop up an initiative. I don't, I don't know what to do then. You left oh, your token, and it shows a little three circles. Uh huh. And then you go to your character sheet, and then click initiative. I'm on my character sheet right now. Yeah. Click initiative while you have the three little bubbles on. And look, you popped. Oh, up. there you go. Oh my god, I did it. That's weird. It won't let me. That's fine. I'll oh, just. Oh, he got forty. Nice. Hey, Elman. Now would be a great time for power word kill. <laughs> fine. Okay. Elman's been too lazy to use that. Why do you have a forty initiative? What the fuck? Was that good? <laughs> okay. Um, who is who? Do you want to go first between Snud and Doctor X? Well, he he rolled natural twenty, so I think you should go first. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, Sounds good. So this dude uh, uh, dispatches and um, oh, that's why. I understand what's happening now. I get what I did. Oh, I made it like as drawing to like look nice in the thing. And I was like, why don't I get a fucking token notification for this? It was really annoying me. Okay, we are good. Just, you know, figuring things out. Okay, so this thing detaches from the pillar and roars very loudly. Its eyes a very bright uh, burgundy color. So, hold on. There it is. Okay, so top of the round. Dr. Rooks, you see this happening. I ran my 15 feet. uh, Bonus action shield of faith on Zylovar. He gets a plus two to AC. Okay, that's a concentration spell. Oh, like we're everyone going. Is behind us. Purple. Yep. Okay, I thought we were ahead of the group. Jesus. Oh, Shield what? of Faith. Level one. Yeah, we're ahead of the group. Make sure you have your plus. Right. 
You what? Your hand. Too many people talking at me. Uh, plus two to your AC, Joey. 21. I know. I got oh. it. Dope. What else? And what, and what level spell can I cast since I cast the first level bonus action? Any. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to uh, attempt to cast uh, Dispel Magic on it at uh, fourth level. That's not a bonus action. Or unless you have the faith, please. I don't know. Oh, it's... Shield of Faith? I don't. I think that's a action. It's a bonus it's action. A bonus is it? Action. It's a bonus action. Never mind. Never mind. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, cool. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, you. Uh, that that's not gonna work. You would know that. That's not how these things work. Oh, I thought it. Okay, sure. I'll take. Listen, I'll take. So, it. I'll take I, the I, reaction. I just um, know that you would know that. You can't just right. like dispel it. Right, cool. If that's the case, and I have some boys I can summon. Uh, oh wait, no, I forgot their concentration check. Fuck. <laughs> this is what I get for only uh, having um, concentration spells. Yeah. Yeah. Not Definitely. concentration spell. Having mostly support spells. Um. Huh. Does this thing look pretty big? Look uh. It. Yeah. It's like. It's considered. I think huge. Nope, large. So it's like 16-ish feet tall. It's big. It is a big boy. A big boy. Oh. I cast the bonus action, so I'll cast another bonus action, action next turn, and I guess I'll just uh, throw... Just um, letting you know it's pitch black in here and Zai's holding a torch. So. Oh, cool. Anyways, um, I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds on it. Inflict wounds is a touch spell. Oh, sorry, I meant the other one. Uh, guiding bolt, because... Oh, wait, actually, let me move my full movement, then. Shoot, so I might as well. Uh, I'm going to move there. And then I'm going to guiding bolt this boy at okay. uh, second level. Go ahead and roll the hit. I, yeah, I can't guiding bolt at second level. So that's going to be a plus nine. Uh... Yeah, I can just roll here. Yeah, it is. Alright, cool. Does a 16 hit? 16 does not hit. Oof. Yeah, so you uh, guiding bolt it, uh, calling energy forth, and it just, like, bounces harmlessly off of this giant stone statue, not quite penetrating the stone. That's it. Okay, Snud, Big what's move. up? Elman on okay, deck. Okay, I am going to... I'm going to use my channel Divinity. That's okay. Legendary Strike, so it lets me pull a crit on a 19 and, or a 20. Hey, nice, okay. I will then jump down here and start whacking Gollum. Okay, go for it. Is your channel divinity in action, or is it just like... A bonus what? action. Oh, cool. That's super dope. Go for it. Um, You're uh, jumping advantage. like... Will you make an acrobatics check to land for me? Because you're jumping like a good 10, 13 feet. As it falls on his face. Okay, you take three points of damage as you land a little bit roughly. Damn, dude. But three. Three points. Why are you damning three points? Damn, dude. Okay, but go ahead and roll your attacks. Okay, I'm going to use my Warhammer. Dope. So 22 to hit. That hits. Six bludgeoning damage. And I... No, that's fine. I'm going to use my second attack. 13 to hit. 13 does not hit. Okay, that is so, my turn. So you are smacking at this thing's like Whoa. boot, essentially. And as you, you manage to get one hit that really uh, cracks the stone, but the second one, it just does not quite hit. So okay. get through the, the hard stone. Uh, that's the end of your turn. Elman, Xylova, you're on deck. Okay, uh, I'll run over here. Can I touch it? Because it's like 16 feet. Yep, you can touch it. Aren't you standing okay. directly on that black thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, is that black stuff? Oh, yep. hold on. I wouldn't do that then. I thought those were like craters or something. Nope, that is black sludge. It's too late on Okay. You're dead. Shh. You're wrong. You're not bad. <laughs> so I'm guessing, can I touch it from here or no? Mm, it's an adjacent square, sure. Oh, beautiful. Okay, I'm going to bestow curse on it. Jesus Christ. All right, so it makes a wisdom save. Let's just start there. Okay. That is a 12. Okay, so it fails. So the curse I'm going to put on it is at the start of its turn. It has to make a wisdom save. If it fails, it spends its action doing nothing. Okay. Got it. And while it's cursed, the your spells do an extra 1d8 necrotic damage. I see that. Cool. No, uh... I, so I have to pick out of four options. Uh, I'm choosing the one where I'm choosing the one where it has to make a save or it can't do anything for it. Okay, 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 okay. I understand now. Thank you. Alrighty. Okay, so it has to do that on its turn. Got it. Uh, wisdom saving throw or above. Sixteen. Sixteen. Cool. Sounds good. Um, anything else? No, I'm just gonna watch it. Fail. They kill it then, or like uh, stop it, I guess. Okay. Zai, what's up? Um. Gosh. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, first off, I have the torch. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, the only way you can see. Damn it. Alright, I'm gonna move. I can, I can cast light if need. I mean, you it doesn't could. help him much right now. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god. Then I God. I'm gonna move over here. Okay, and attack then... of opportunity. Oh god. Oh wait, how would the spell work with that? That's spending no, it's just on its turn. It's, it's, yes. it's just it's action. Only action, not bonus action, reaction or Okay, okay, okay. Uh that is a oh god damn it, that sucks. A twelve to hit. Oh, it doesn't hit. I'm mad. Um, are you stepping on the black sludge? Because you're kind of on it. No. Okay. Okay. You purposely put yourself in hands of it. Touch one <laughs> Okay. Two. Sounds good. What What else are you doing? Um, uh, I'm gonna tell Rooks, I can't see it. I can't kill it if I can't see it. Okay. Are oh, you pulling so the now you run? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can't see it, so what is he supposed to do? I mean, you can see it. You're just holding a torch and can't pull out yes, your I, I'd have to drop the torch. Oh, right. Your axe is two-handed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else you're doing on your turn? I don't know. I'm doing my turn. turn action? Yeah, you could... You could... I would say you'd be able to pull out your axe as like your equip action if you just chuck the torch on the ground and then mm -hmm. hold your attack if you would like. Right, then that's what I'm going to do then. So if it comes within melee range, you're going to attack it. And pray that Dr. Rooks has casted light by then, otherwise it's at disadvantage because it's pitch black. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know what I'm going to do. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Next up, these this dude detaches from the wall. Hey, hey, um, chill, chill, chill. He is going to move oh, Christ. towards the... Yeah, he does not see Cass. He's going to move towards you. Um, I breathe. I breathe. And... I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, shit. You oh, won't. God. Wait, uh, you won't. It's, it's a just a going at it. You won't. It is you not a charm it. effect. Doing a curse on you. Alright, 24. Zari's tired of your shit shorting. <laughs> He's not mm. wrong. Okay, so you are now under the effects of slow. Um oh, you fuck. Oh no, just kidding, just kidding. You rolled a 24, you're fine, you shrugged it off. <laughs> I, I uh, didn't now under... we know what the trick is, guys. <laughs> and then Elvin you gets slowed. <laughs> you know what? Oh, no. <laughs> just you wait. Um, so it, sh yeah, so you are, you shrug off an effect, you feel something come over your mind and manage to shrug off an effect, 
and it's kind of just growling in front of you. Um, this dude turns his giant ass around uh, and is going to... Hey, okay. I need both Elman and Ka and Snud to make wisdom saving throws. But you have to make a this wisdom saving action. Throw. Yeah, is this uh, its action? Oh shit, that's right. So if he doesn't succeed, he doesn't get to do it. Yes, that's a natural twenty. Ah, uh, he made it. So we make him wisdom save. Yes, you uh, are. Ah, uh, he made it. Oh shit. Oh god. Ah oh, shit. I'm slow. Oh, Elman, now. I just realized there are two here. Wait, Snod, do you have advantage? I do not. Okay. Okay, so you both are under the effects of slow. Um, you can't use... Save? No. <laughs> you can't use your reaction. Your speed is halved, and you can't make more than one attack. You can choose to take either an action or a bonus action on your turn, not both. And you can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. Holy shit. Oh no! So, Stop it. So these Stop two it. dudes both come awake and move here, coming towards Stop the action, and that oh, is God. the end of their turns. So oh, you guys oh, are slowed. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Alrighty. Oh wait, shit! I don't know why. Sorry. Mm, Go ahead, pass. I'm gonna take Do the hood off the lantern. I don't. It doesn't say what that is, but uh, <gasps> we'll say it's a bonus action. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I take off the hood off the lantern so that it's a regular lantern. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna go up to the one attacking Rooks. And I'm gonna sneak up on it. Yeah, he did not see you at all. I already rolled perception checks. So, well, also Rooks is right there. So go ahead and roll your attack. Uh, I guess, I guess I'll fly over and I'll go find him. Okay. Go ahead place. and roll your attack. Uh, not really can. Uh, yeah, that hits. Because your bonus is like ten or something. Oh, yeah, I don't have my bonus action. Uh, so yeah, so he takes uh, 5d6 damage, takes 17 points of uh, damage. Alrighty. Piercing damage. Um, is your dagger magic? Or is your sword magic? magic? No, it is a regular. Okay, so as you swing at the hard form of this, you're finding that uh, your sword cannot even pierce the armor at all. The stone. That's good to know. Um, yeah, good luck, Rooks. I'm out of here. Do you chill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, no. you, can't, uh, you can't disengage because you I used your bone. I don't have to pick. disengage because I attack them. Oh, shit. That's right. Your feet. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. But you're not hiding because you can't. Yeah. I'm just away from him. Alrighty, Dr. Rooks. Alright, uh, Rooks is going to take the attack of opportunity and uh, run. Uh, if I take this square over here, will I be touching the black stuff? Uh, no. If you're on top okay. of Zai, no. Okay, then I'm just going to move here. That's uh, the 20... That's a 24 to hit. Uh, let's see. Hit my AC by three. <laughs> okay. That is 23 bludgeoning damage as it oh, slings god. into you. Oh god. Oof. Oh, uh, thank you for the temp HP. I have, I'm at 40 out of 53. Uh, I'm going to cast <laughs> light on... I'm going to touch Zai's axe and cast light on it. Um, just do it so uh, DM knows how much uh, light is in the room right now. Okay, thank you. Oh, this is wherever his size uh, thing is. Um, Three foot radius. I'm going to bonus action. I cast. Um, where is it? Where is it? I think it's a level two spell. There we go. And it's not concentration. Perfect. I'm going to bonus action cast spiritual weapon. Okay. 
And uh who's ready for Zari's amazingly drawn things. Uh, his uh -oh. dagger comes out, it can move sixty feet and attack as soon as it's out. It's just gonna move uh right. Uh Zai, where are you gonna go? Um probably over here, to be honest with you. Oh god. <laughs> over here. Okay, then there's no point in my weapon going over there because you will be there. Um Brooks is going to cast his uh dagger over Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> where, where do you want your uh, dagger? <laughs> I guess it'll go here. Uh, he's hope, and I'm hoping that a uh, cast comes over here so that they could both just get advantage essentially. Um, you can't and, uh, flank with a dagger, but okay. It's a spiritual weapon. No, it's not a threat. <laughs> it's not something that, yeah. He can't attack it, so therefore it's not like considered. Oh, uh, yeah, that's fair. All right. Oh well. Uh, either way, uh, he's gonna uh, attack it. Um, you know what? Nope. Yeah, I'll Go just, ahead. I'll just keep it at second level. It doesn't matter. Um, D8 plus 5, that's still pretty good. Alright, uh, let's cast Spiritual Weapon. Does a 15 hit? 15 does not hit. As your dagger tries to cut into it, it just does not quite pierce the armor. Oh well. Um, you, at least Zai has light on him now. Yep. Yeah. Is light concentration? Yeah, uh, no. It's not. It's a cantrip. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to move the rest cantrip of my movement. Is this a wall? Yeah. That okay. that's just it's just broken down. So this is right. like the edge of the wall right here. And fifteen. Okay. Uh, Rooks is just gonna run that way and get over here. Okay. Sounds good. Snud, what are you doing? You uh, are slowed. Yep, I'm going to attack it. Okay, so you get one attack. Ready, go. T6. 26 does hit. All right. Uh, cracking some of the armor a little bit as you swing at it. I will then use Divine Smite. Okay. Uh, I could use uh, one spell slot to do two extra D8 uh, yep. damage. Yep, yep, yep. Snud will save us all. That's mine. All whilst slowed. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah, I think when do you yeah, I can't heal things. slow with lesser restoration. Probably greater restoration. God well, damn it. I just realized something and I'm so mad at myself. Oh well, it's fine. It's man. fine. No, I just forgot. Be dead again? No, I forgot about something earlier. Uh, you're... Okay, you do save from slow. Awesome. So you are no longer slowed. Man. And it's my turn. And the effect is ended. Elmin, what are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm man. gonna... <laughs> I'm going to attempt to cast Shatter over here. I can hit both of those. Okay. What are you casting? Sorry? Shatter. So what do I roll? A d20? It has to be above a... For shatter? Oh, hold on. I need to pull up the spell. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So um, I can like, who has like, to, at... like roll something for the slow. Hold for the slow, I pass it on yeah. the turn. I, I know I roll a d20. I think I have to beat an 11 for it to go off this turn. So and if it's lower than 11, oh, it goes off next turn. um, that's not. It works for this one. It doesn't say anything oh. about that. It just like you can just either have an action or a bonus action. Oh, so this is like a nerf down slow. Okay. Yes, then... and also because like they don't have to concentrate it on it either. Oh, okay. Then, yes, I will cast Shatter over there. So they both make con saves, and they're made out of metal, so they make it at disadvantage. They're not made out of metal. They are actually made out of stone. Okay, so they still take disadvantage on it. Okay, good Isn't to know. like, constructs get disadvantage? It says inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal. Okay, okay. Um, one of them has a 10, the other has a 20. Alright, so one so. takes 16 and the other takes 8. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Anything? That, that's all I'm doing. Okie dokie. Okay. Sounds good. Zai, what are you doing? Um, Coming up here. Coming and... up behind it. Behind it, and I'm gonna hit it with my great axe. See how well that goes. Okay. 
I can finally see. Okay, go ahead and make your first attack. Fourteen does not hit. Go ahead and try your second. Nope. You're uh, swinging your axe at it, and it's just not quite finding a crack in the uh, super <sighs> thick armor. Uh, glancing harmlessly off of it, kind of making sparks, which is interesting because your axe is also now has a ball of light on it. Okay. Mm. Anything with your bonus action? I don't think you can do anything. No. Or well, yeah, you have a couple things, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you're yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Um... Staying there. Uh, no. No. No, not uh... Cass. Zai, staying there. Yeah, I'm staying there. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me check something. Nope. Okay. Uh, we have at you, Snud. Since you're swinging at it, he's not too worried. That's a 17 to hit, which I think glances off. Did he make a wisdom save from this? Oh God damn it! I keep forgetting. Can you use heal attack? Damn. Uh, he did not make his wisdom save, so, so he can't. Do anything, he yeah. doesn't do shit. Okay. Okay. So I, so I can use my sentinel attack. No, because he didn't. First of all, that's if you attack. If he attacks anybody else, uh, is it an actual hit or is it if he just attacks? I think it's a hit. Um. Uh, see, makes an attack towards a target other than you. Okay. Okay. He didn't even make the attack. Cause... He didn't make the attack though okay. because Elman's right. spell. But you are exactly right, and that's exactly what you could do in the future. Um, this dude is going to... Which one? He's annoyed that Dr. Oh, Rooks... Uh, can what? I retroactively no. make a voice? Oh, Oops. yeah. We both no. forgot. Go for it. No. Nope. You are still slowed. Wait, dude... am I getting any bonus from Snud oh. Paladin and stuff? From Snud's what? Oh, Paladin Snud! Stuff? Yeah, Snud, no, don't you have I'm a Paladin? Sure it's only for fear. No, there's I'm something mistaken. for all saving throws. Spell, channel, divinity, extra attack, or protection while you're conscious. <laughs> while you're conscious, you grant all friendly creatures, including yourself, within 10 feet, plus 2 to all saving throws. Oh, so an 11. Probably still didn't. Oh, you made it. No. Oh my god. No, it did not. <laughs> did not. Okay, so Dr. Rooks, this dude's coming at you. Uh, hey, really? <laughs> you oh, ran away from him. He does not have his slow back. So about this form. that is a 19 to hit. That does not. Okay, so he you you kind of dodge out of the way, catching it on your shield. Um alrighty, this one saw Zai run, so he's going oh. past him, coming for you. Um uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Does anything happen when he steps on the sludge? Mm, not that you can see. 20. Okay, so you hear this thing come up behind you. You feel something come over your brain, but it doesn't quite take effect. What the fuck was that? Oh, fuck. Yep, and there's this thing behind you. This one's going to move forward 30 feet. It saw the little figure flying in the corner huh. and is going to go swat the fly. But oh, there he is. <laughs> I was wondering what he was. <laughs> is that good at stealth? Yep. Um, are you within 10 feet? Better, you are! Better, okay, you make, a, make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh man, I'm... Wow, da -da -da -da. I realize how good I was at these. Seven. Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay, you are also oh, no. now slowed. <laughs> Welcome to the slow club. I don't think it's like, uh, you cannot get slowed. No. Uh, slow. And anyone who casts slow is slowed themselves. I'm... No, that's not a thing. Damn it. Alrighty, that is the end of their turn. Cass, what are you doing? Alright, wall. Okay. Um. 20. Yeah, there's the only thing I can do. I'm gonna fucking throw a deck, a card. In the deck. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay. Hold on. 30 feet. I have, I have it open. I'm putting it. I, uh, I actually have it open this time. How many cards do I have, by the way? You 13. have 12 left. Okay, I have 12. 
because you've used one. I need to get rid so, of it. So go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Two. Okay. So uh, an illusion of a knight and four guards appear around the golem. Okay. Can I separate them? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so we'll say that there's like could I get a knight a dude here yeah. and and like oh i wanted it i didn't want it in front of me i wanted it right here oh okay I'm sorry, what did he do where do you, you <laughs> want it you want the like, knight oh no i'm moving the wrong thing it's a knight and four guards okay so one here let's make this dude a little bigger sorry, or he'll... go to the uh thing and just pull in some sprites because i don't want to think she has knights the knight's, the knight's gonna be yellow. Do you want them all there? All just nuts. Yes. <laughs> there are more snuts. <laughs> oh my god, they're all. Snuts. You know what? You know what? I'm okay with this. I'm a hundred percent okay with this. No, that's too many studs. <laughs> One less. Okay. Yeah. So there's. Oh no, you were right. I'm so sorry. I doubted you, Candle. Go ahead and put one more out. <laughs> So, I'm guessing the other one's right. Uh, I don't think I could move them. You just made them appear here? Yeah. Okay. This is great. Um, okay. And the DC is 15. Got it. Alrighty. Then I'm gonna yeet out of here. Okay, you only uh, have half your movement. Yeah, if I couldn't dash. So, 40. So... You can't dash. You, uh, your speed is halved, and you can't. Right, can't you only have action. an action or a bonus action. So, uh, I'll go over here. Okay. You're flying. Cool. Okay. Sounds good. Doctor Rex, what are you doing? Uh, really quick. I need to use web using my boots. My boots is a bonus action. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm just gonna have to be open to getting some hits for a while then. I'll take the attack of opportunity from this guy because uh Inzai, you're gonna end up losing your uh aid. <laughs> not your not your aid, your aid. You're so 10, 15, Taking an attack of opportunity. Twenty. That's a fifteen, uh, which does not hit. Thirty. Oof, that's two attack of opportunities. And you're going across the black sludge. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, sorry, I wanted to move here. Here. I'm gonna move here. Um, I would say you would be able to duck underneath along, like, over here. What? Okay, sure. So, uh, he's a yeah. gigantic statue. Huh? Okay. You could duck yeah. through his feet, but... 15 to hit. You would get an attack of opportunity from this dude if you went to the corner Sorry, over there. Just... Oh, here. <laughs> so, you get another attack of opportunity. Yes. <laughs> so, 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Okay, and I need you to make a concentration check for Shield of Faith. Oh, uh, I'm going to lose it anyway, so I'm just going to drop it. Um, um, right. Oh, Zai, you no longer have that. Kind of a bitch. Okay, what are you... I'm looking for the spell. Uh, it's the fireball. Uh, let's see how this would work. Everyone, oh, cool! Even my boy would get it. Oh, cool! Everyone would get it, including some of the knights. All right, uh, I'm going to. Uh, uh, the knights don't get it; they're illusions. Oh, they're just illusions. I thought they were real. Oh yeah, I no. can just summon knights in a round. It's quite a nice class. That'd be great, though. <laughs> you can just summon the dead. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um. Okay, cool. I'm gonna cast a beacon of hope. Hey. Uh, and uh, everyone has everyone in in throws death saves, and uh, if I heal you, you get the max number of HP. Who is taking damage so far? Zai. You. Just me. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, cool. Well, I need to stay alive, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cast a first level uh, cure wounds on myself. Healing word. Healing word is a bonus action. 
Oh, right, right, right. Thank you. Um, first level healing word. So that's Ooh. four plus your shenanigans. That is true. All right, so that's four plus five plus two plus one. So five, two, seven, one, eight. So that's four plus eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. twelve. I get twelve HP back. From a healing oh. word? Holy fuck. Okay. You're good at what you do, man. I did not come to play with these hoes. <laughs> these hoes. Oh, God. Okay. Right, so now, anyone needs to make any saves, you can make it with uh, advantage. Nudge. Alright. Oh, Cass, you didn't make your your save before this to try to get out of the slow. Do you have to make it at the end of my turn? Yes. It's, so go ahead. No, nope, so nope, like not with words. advantage. Oof. Not with advantage because that was before. That is a natural one. Okay. Uh, Snud, go. All right. Attack. Ah. I went to hit for six damage. Yup. Okay. You, you're you not slowed anymore, so. Nope. 19 to hit for another six damage. Yup. And I'll use another. Oh, wait. Don't you... Oh, wait. That's not a natural 19. Just kidding. I'll use my. <laughs> I, I say a spell slot to uh, Divine Slot again. Oh, wait, no, nine damage. Bonus action. Nice. All now right. It's my turn. Elman, what are you doing? Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to drop Bestow Curse and cast Confusion on So they both make a Wisdom save. Okay. The first oh. one is a natural 20. The yeah. second one is a 17. Oh, well, that did nothing. Okay, that's my... Oh, sorry. Okay, make your wisdom save to get out of slow with advantage. Nice. Okay, you managed to shrug off the effect. And are no longer slowed at the end of this turn. Are you moving anywhere or are you staying there? Uh, no, that was thin. Okay. Alrighty, Zai. I'm gonna attack Mr. Man over here. Okay, go for it. First attack. First attack. Does not now, hit. Okay, now I'm gonna turn around and attack this boy right here that snuck up on me. Okay. Does it not hit. hit. You are rolling awfully. I am getting pissed off. I'm gonna use an action surge. Okay. I can. That's a 22 hey, to hit. This, this dude, Miss Sneaky. Yes. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage. That's 18. Ooh, nice. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and roll your second attack for your action surge. That's a twenty-three to hit. That does. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh god. That's fourteen damage. Fourteen more damage. Nice. Okay. Um, his uh, armor is starting to crack in places. He looks like he's taken quite a few hits. Meat. You are killing it. Okay. Um. So this dude gets Which that one? back. Um. Which one? Uh, he thinks the the one he's not attacking. He's casting slow again on all you three. So I need wisdom saving throws from Snud and Elman and Zai. That's another yeah. one. With advantage. Okay, Zai's fine. It's 19. What? It's 19. Oh, um, because of your bonus. Mine's a 16 with it. Okay, 16 just does not make it. Elman, what is uh, happening? Are you okay, my friend? Uh, a, this is this is not a combat element was made for. <laughs> this is not Puffy a combat. Are you okay? <laughs> no, he's not okay. Okay, this dude is annoyed that you are hitting him and is going to make an attack against you. Uh, that is a natural one. It does not hit. <laughs> um, this one is... Which one? Uh, which one? So confused. Right there. Oh, that one, okay. An intelligence. Yeah, oh god. Oh god. He is going to go... attack these guys. And... Oh, I don't care. And his fists swing through it harmlessly. Um, that is invincible. What? 
Yeah, uh, but he realizes what? now that they are, you know, what? not a thing, but what? he ha wasted an attack. Is also going to go for the, <laughs> the baby. Wait, yeah, no, he thinks that it's a thing and it wastes an attack. Okay, and does not get that back, so we are good. Alrighty, Cass, what are you doing? Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna. Wait, 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 what happened? They figured out their illusions or something? Yeah, these two figured out that they're illusions. Okay, um. I'm gonna go back up and nothing anymore than So the rest of you can. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna fly up to this one's face and I'm gonna use the help action for whoever attacks him next. Okay, give him advantage. Got it. Kind of being a pesky fly around his face. Yeah, cool. Just kind of cover his eyes. <laughs> uh... Sorry, that's really funny. Okay, Dr. Rex, what are you doing? Uh, does anyone need healing? Oh. I'm on one HP okay. right now. Are you are you joking or are you being serious? I'm joking. I'm fine. Okay. Um. Oh, Cass needs a wisdom save. Thank you, thank you, Shorty. Cass needs a wisdom save with advantage. Sure. No, it's just scary. Seventeen does make it, so you shrug off the effects of slow for next turn. Oh my god. Yes. Uh. I Thank need you. To... What did I use my um level spell for? Your what level spell? I used it for dispel magic. Wait. Oh yeah, that didn't work. What did I use my fourth level spell for? You I didn't. I... You were going to cast dispel magic, but I was like, yeah. bro, that's not gonna work. Okay, cool, cool. cool. Uh, um, they're not magical. Or... I'm that's going not to... how it works. You can dispel that's constructs. Not... The only occupies the space. The magic you can... them together. I'm pretty sure. It doesn't tell me what level spell it is, so I don't know how that would work. Hold on. It's up to you to decide. Me rain. Um, based on you... the magic that is causing these things to come alive, it would not work. Okay, okay. Then okay. I could like um, dispel animated armor and shit. Right, yeah. So I'm going to make another a uh, wild move. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, first things first. Uh, I'm gonna take that. Uh, he is going. He is going to um make his little thing um attack uh his knife attack wait attack wait. uh this boy. I'm gonna go ahead and roll. No. No. Uh, <laughs> you. It's fine. I'm just knowing because I can't. I'm trying to like. Okay, it's second level, so let me go ahead and cast it. There you go. It's like we're not supposed to win this. No. 20 does hit. Okay, it takes 9 force damage. Dope. And, um, he, uh, okay, so let me read how this spell works real quick so it I know is... where to position it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so, he is going to cast. I am actually really excited to use this one. Um. Okay. Oh, uh, that would be. Oh, wait, I need my arrow. Oh. Yep. Oh, oh yes. Oh yeah, baby is triple. Oh yes! Alright. <laughs> oh god. Um, I'm going to- I can use my bonus action to move it and attack. attack so is it okay if I move the uh, my spiritual weapon uh, over here instead? Sure. Alright, cool. Uh, it's over here. And in uh, this space... Baby, not- Hold on. Yes, you can. It's fine. Wait, well, it's on the end <laughs> in this space. Uh, you see, he uh, puts his hands together. and He says, oh, "You want an opportunity? You want an opportunity to see some action?" And he just points his finger, and a, a light blue pillar falls from the ceiling. And you just see a gigantic vision visage of uh, Ebony. And he casts <laughs> Guardian of Faith. Nice. Okay. So, what? How big of a circle is that? It's anything within ten feet of it. Okay, so where are you putting it? I'm putting it right here. Uh, oh, I meant to show the spell, not roll for damage. Um, 
Let's play. Here we go. Um, there's a spell, sorry. Okay. I can't fucking. Okay. Thank you. Tit, tit does 60 damage. It just leaves. Well, it doesn't do damage unless they walk into it. Yeah. That's how it works. Hey. Oh, wait, so, they have to physically walk into it. It's not like one of those, uh, if you cast it, spell. No, they have to physically move into it. The spell is it's, actually the it's fucking It's called words. Garden of Faith, not Death of Faith. Yeah, well, that's why, because it does a fuck ton of damage. So it's like if they oh, move into it. That's a fair faith. point, but also if you saw that, why would you walk into it, you know? Never mind, well, I don't do well, it. Like, you could put it where your allies are. You could still do it and put it, like, where they're at. So if the yeah, other but ones they, come but in. nothing else, yeah, that's fair but nothing else can fit like in this way it's no, spectral, they're really it? big it hovers so no no, no. i mean they can't fit in this space either. there's not really much point no mm -hmm. what whatever you want if i did put it uh because they're not going after elmen and cast can already move relatively quickly away like you can take a bonus action disengage so i probably so it probably wouldn't be the smartest to waste a spell on that um yeah. all right uh let's try and inflict wounds then let's try level That's a four okay, i'm aware okay, um, just okay let's uh walk here and do a level a level four inflict wounds okay go ahead and roll guy here uh spell attack uh where is it ah damn it <laughs> wait on which why? one why oh no. i can never just i'm never doing attack spells again Rooks isn't built <laughs> oh, no. For it. <laughs> oh no no you just rolled shitty the dice gods don't like you for attack spells apparently I roll really right. well for healing most times. Okay. Right, uh, that was my um, wait. Yeah, I did my bonus action. So yeah, that's all I can do, and no one else needs healing right now. So. Okie dokie. Alrighty, Snud. All right. That's oh, so hey, yeah, yeah, double do eight times the damage. Jesus fucking Christ. You do Smite how it. much damage? Eight times the damage. Smite it. Cheese it. Yeah, if you pour a smite into that, I know you... definitely I'm gonna do a smite. So, do you want me to roll 48 straight up? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that because roll 20 likes to. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's eight plus six, fourteen plus nine, twenty-three. Nice. I am then going to use my mighty speed option. There you go. Your mighty what? Mighty deed. What is Whenever that? Whenever I crit or kill someone, it, uh, I could either give uh, 1d6 plus my charisma modifier as temporary hit points to people, or a creature must succeed a wisdom saving throw or be afraid of me. They're constructs. I don't believe fear would actually affect them, so I'm going to give yeah. uh, temporary hit points to Zylovar and... Uh, Okay. How many hit points? I'm giving you guys temporary hit points, so uh, eight more temporary hit points for both of you. Just so you know, candle hit points, uh, temporary hit points on stack. They just replace each other. Uh, and for, didn't you guys get hit? I didn't. I haven't been hit. Uh, Rose so is the them. only one who's been hit this fight, which is really weird. <laughs> Uh, then I'm going to give Dr. Rooks uh, six temporary hit points and uh... Thank you! <laughs> Eyes and healer. I am then going to hit him with my second attack. More 19. That does hit. Eight bludgeoning damage. Nice. Alright, I'm going to use an earth spell slot to do to the eights of radiant damage. Go for it. Then... Uh, Snut is just like a killing machine today. Uh, so many divine smites. I love it. Okay. He is, his armor, especially the one leg that you keep whacking away on, is starting to really crack. He looks like he's barely holding together. Okay. And it's my oh, turn. Fucking sin that I can't do anything, so I'm going to use the wand. Of <laughs> okay. What is that? I assume you have it open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god, this is the same shitty one that I got last time. Okay, an object of the GM's choice disappears, so like a rock again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Piano up here. No, disappears. <laughs> yes. Uh, a piece of rubble over here, you kind of see out of the corner of your eye, just kind of disappears. I roll my eyes. I'm okay. devastated. Roll your wisdom saving throw. Oh my god. With advantage. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> oh my it's, god. Solid it, 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 it's been a rough day. I'm moving. I'll take attack of opportunity. I'm gonna go sit. So. You're gonna go sit and pout? <laughs> That's a 24 to hit. It hit. 17, 17 bludgeoning oh. damage. Okay. Elman's sitting and pouting in the corner. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then one day, the campaign, everything you made disappear right just like now. drops on the final boss. <laughs> that would be hilarious. It's been like two rocks. One of them was a big boulder, though. This one was smaller. Okay. Zai? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna attack this one. Because, yes. Yeah. Right. And then 19 to hit. Yup. Go ahead and roll damage. Not rolling while this way. And 13 damage. Okay. Second attack. Yep. That's nat 20. Hey. hey, boy. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Uh. That is a 12. Yeah. Wait. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Alrighty. Yes. So you smack it with your axe twice. The second hit finding purchase in between uh, a gigantic crack and you like wedge it in more and the whole thing just kind of falls apart. Um, the black ooze actually pours from it and uh. splatters onto both you and Snud. Um uh -oh. I need... That's why you don't smoke. Me too? Or... Uh, not... It's the one that's in front of Snud. Oh, oh and Dr. Rux. And Dr. Rux. Damn it. I was hoping so... you would forget about me. <laughs> so I need... Wow. Wow. Okay, so I need all of you to make a strength saving throw. Alright, why do you hate me? Oh, God. That's a 10. Uh, that's actually a 12, but... Uh, I got a 19. Wait, why is it a... Well, you but you have to give plus two to all. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Wait, so... don't I get a plus one to saving throws? Why? It's already added. Or, oh, oh, yeah. yeah it's already I'm using added D&D Beyond, um, but if you're using Roll 20, it's all up to you. Okay. Okay. So you guys. Hold on. Okay. So you guys take. um. Sorry, math is hard. So, uh, Zai, you take eight radiant damage, and uh, Snud and uh, Dr. Rooks, you both take four radiant damage. And then you also take six points of damage, and uh, Dr. Rooks and Snud, you both take half of that three take three points of damage. And you're not quite sure what it is. It feels really weird, and it kind of hurts your brain. As the thing explodes and is now dead. Oh, no, Cass, Cass, you're right there, too. That's what I was saying. Okay. Uh, make a strength saving throw for me. Natural okay. Damn it. Natural one. Some nine. Um, okay. You also take, it was eight plus six, so whatever, 14. 14? Isn't that eight plus six? Okay, so he has exploded and in his place is, oh wait, I want to do that on a different layer. I'm going to keep picking it up every single fucking time. And his place is Black Sludge. Okay. Alrighty. 
That was the end of your turn, Zai. Yes. Okay. Um, he does not get that back. He is going to attack you, though. So that is a 25 to hit you, Zai. That does hit me. Okay, you take 19 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, hold on. I gotta do maps now. Uh, wait. I think that's... God damn it. <laughs> oh, okay. I was way off. Never mind. Okay, um, and then I need, yeah, Snud, Dr. Rooks, Cass, and Zai to make wisdom saving throws with advantage. All right, I'm going to cry. 17. Saves. Uh, 21. 13. Hey, 24. Oh, you add, you add two because of Snud, too. So 15 does oh, so not 15. save. You are slowed. Uh... Zai, Snud, you're fine. Dr. Rooks, you're fine. So Zai is now slowed. Alrighty, that was his turn. Um, This dude is annoyed that these guys were illusions and is going Does to... Does he know all of them are illusions? Because he only attacked one, right? He attacked those two, kind of, and then is moving along and actually succeeded on his intelligence check miraculously that these were also illusions so yeah i just rolled it he has a negative four to intelligence i just want to let you all know and oh wait zai you didn't get your advantage on your hits because Cass was helping you did you hit both of them um, oh no you were hitting the other guy you were hitting the other guy yeah, yeah. never mind okay i was just making sure it's going to come up next to you Cass. Um, he does not get that back. Um, Rosario, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm kind of, uh, kind of surrounded by big boulder. I don't boys, know if you noticed, but you caused this on yourself, Josh. Cass, <laughs> that's a 22 to hit? When don't uh, I cause things? I mean, it does hit. I'm gonna use Uncanny Dodge. Okay, 17 half bludgeoning damage. damage, half to... God. 18, 9, 8 damage. There we go. Eight damage. Okay. <sighs> okay. Cass, what are you doing? Right, good luck, Zai. Uh, <laughs> disengage. Bonus action. Let's see if... Uh... Yeah. I'll... You're not slowed anymore. Yeah, I know. Um, I'll be over here. And then as my action, I'll move all... I'll move one of the knights into the space I was in. I'll move the main knight. Okay. And then I'll have them all like flank and like just kind of surround them. I'm gonna put a different color on him because the slow is yellow in my brain. Oh, that's like on top of him. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Dr. X. Um, I. Oh wait, uh, I was not. What's that? I want to move here. That's it. That's fine. Uh, if I move into this space, am I technically touching the sludge? Yes. Um, well, Zai, uh, no healing for you. I'm joking. I just step in it. <laughs> okay. I need you to make a charisma saving throw. I. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I have a plus four to this. So I'm not. Plus, you get plus you. Two. Okay, you get one point of fire damage, because I rolled like shit. Uh, one point of fire damage, and... Ooh, um... Five points of bludgeoning damage. Hey, uh, Rooks is not doing so hot. Um, Rooks is going to cast, um, wounds, so a... So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doesn't it automatically succeed or whatever? Oh yeah, because you're. Oh wait, but did you took damage, so shouldn't you have to roll a concentration check? Oh yeah, roll a concentration check for your. For oh your right. What do I roll? Spell uh d twenty, plus your Constitution modifier. 
Uh, like no, a constitution not. saving throw, essentially. Cool, I have a plus one to that. Oof. Damn, it's okay. so close. Yeah, so you lose concentration on Beacon of Hope. I hate my life. It's fine. Um, he is going to... Um, third level Cure Wounds <laughs> die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zai, this is how much you get. Lovar gets 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 HP back. Um, and I'm going to bonus action. Um, I'm going to bonus action, mass cure wounds. Uh, what level cure mass cure wounds can I cast? Healing word. Mass healing word is the spell you can cast. But you can't, because I'm pretty sure that's a third level. It's second level or lower. I'm already back at full health. Oh, well then, I guess I'm going, I'm going to first level because I need to keep a third level slot. I have no second level. You should, um, you should, you should stay there since I have Symbian. Oh no, I'm definitely staying here. Um, oh, okay. And I'm going to, um, uh, how, Snud and Cass, how are you two doing? I'm fine. With full health. What's that? You should heal yourself. Full health. You're doing the worst. Yeah, speaking of, thank you. I get a uh, three plus, uh, get three two plus the spells level back. So I get two plus three, so I get five HP back for that. Five. And I'm going to, I guess, uh, cure wounds myself. You mean healing uh, word? Healing word, that one. Um, I'm going to healing word myself as a bonus action, and my knife is not getting any action. Um, how would you call it? Get six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> I get nine HP back. Is it try tender? Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. I get nine HP back. Okay. It's not. All right. I'm doing a lot better. All right. I'm going to wiggle through my short stature and go right here and attack uh, this guy with my fellow snuds. <laughs> Your fellow snuds. That's cute. Okay. Uh, I ass- you. We're not really dragging more in Paladin. Where, where were you past, wiggling through? Uh, past uh, Dr. Rooks. Okay. Passing through that square would give you the sludge. Okay. That's fair. Okay. So that is a charisma saving throw. Okay. Go ahead and roll that for me. That's 13. That's 15. Okay. That's already added. Um, is it? Yeah. No. I don't think so. I think this is his mod and proficiency. What's your charisma? Um, well, he's... I'm D&D I'm D- Beyond it already. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Two no. plus your prof- no, that should be it. Because you have two charisma, three proficiency, and then two for your... Oh, whatever. I don't, I don't mind failing. Uh, so, 13. Okay. I mean, it would have failed either way. Just saying. Um... You don't have to be mean like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just okay, want to kill so Snud again, sorry. Oh, one <laughs> Six points of po- poison damage and another six points of thunder damage. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Yes. <laughs> thunder cats. Okay, go ahead and roll your, your attacks with your fellow Snuds. <laughs> Right. You do not get advantage. Oh wait, yeah, there's another creature. Never mind. You're fine. You're fine. You have pack tactics. Twenty hit. Well, I, I forgot. I forgot that Zai was right there. Yeah, I'm right here, buddy. Okay, they both hit. So that's twenty-three points of damage. Thank you for doing the math because I did not do that right for whatever reason. Oof. <laughs> okay, Elman. Uh, yeah, from crisscross applesauce position behind the throne, I'll like just lean <laughs> and cast phantasmal one. So I have to make an intelligence save. <laughs> He's just pouting. That mm. is a ten. Okay, so like, uh, I want like a chain. I want him to think like a chain wraps around him and it starts like reeling him down to the ground slowly. So like he slowly starts lowering. Okay, sounds good. It'll fall prone for me, and then that's my turn, and I have dis- I have regular roll. Yup. I'm never gonna- I'm never gonna beat it. 
<laughs> it is literally another case of uh, Cass and the dragon fear going on here. Are so you going to tell us the 7 DC? Zai. Uh, okay. Um, no. I'm going to attack this boy right here. Right Wait, here, here, and it's gonna be awesome. And you're yeah. technically flanking with Snud, so you get advantage. Oh, yes, because he's a big boy. Okay, 27, 27 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. It's okay, I'm awesome like that. That's 18 damage. Nice. Okay, my second attack. The 26, 26 does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Team damage because I'm Dope. awesome. Can you take yeah, Zai's icon off? Job. Can I take what? His Zai's slow icon off. It's throwing me off now. Oh, sorry. I apologize. I missed that one. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. I don't think I can do anything else other than that. Okay. I already used my action search, so yeah, I'm good. Yeah, so that is, oof. Okay, so this dude swings at Invisible Snud. This okay. dude, and nothing happens. This dude is swinging at Yuzai because you've been oh, flagging him. Actually... Oh, that's right, that's right, you're right, 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 right. What's... Can you make an intelligence save again? Oh yeah, that's a negative three. Um, okay, so 26 to hit Yuzai. I uh, guess, and I'm going to use Stone's Endurance. Okay, so that's 20 bludgeoning damage. Go ahead and roll for your Stone's Endurance. A 1d12 plus 2. That's not what I wanted. 1d12 plus 2. That is 10. So I get 12. I get 12 attack and 12. No, you take 10 damage then. Oh. So it reduces the damage by... It was 20 damage and you take 10 of it. Oh. Okay, Mitch. this one Snud turns around at the the dude swinging at the back of his kneecaps, and you take that's a seventeen, which doesn't hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's hey, it. Would my what, does the attack have to land for my sentient to work? Nope, you can use it. Sent sent nope. sentinel. There we go. Sentinel. No, sorry, you had the one chance to make fun of him for saying one. <laughs> <laughs> and, you... and I fucked it up myself. Yeah, yeah, you did. See, I wasn't making fun. I was, just, bitch. I was just correcting it. Yeah, no, that does not hit. Right, so your reaction is gone. Now. It's vaguely, right, right. not vaguely. Sorry. Yeah, and it's hammock, not hammer. Okay, I'm Cass, what do you want to do? <laughs> I'm just ignoring you guys. Cass, what are you doing? I am. Well, I don't know. Can I say what I'm going to do if you're going to ignore me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... I'm gonna go over here and help action on this one, covering its eyes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. So the next person to smack at this dude has advantage. Or I'll, can I give a disadvantage by covering its eyes? Because I don't know such thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Let me just look it up quickly. I'm gonna check on this. It's working. Okay, it's working. I get so paranoid that I'm muted the whole stream. Ah. Uh, you, the creature you aid gains advantage on the next ability check it makes to perform the task that you're helping with. Or you can faint distract the target in some sort of way that makes your allies attack more effective. If your ally attacks the target before your next turn, it's made with advantage. So you can't give it disadvantage, you just give it, a, give snud advantage. So. Cool. Anything else? Nope. I can't do Do anything. Dr. Rooks. Uh, alright, uh, it's time to get this over with. Uh, Spirit Guardians, fourth level. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the circle. Thank you. 15 will be about here. Uh, I'm gonna draw a circle by hand. Oh, 
Oh. I've already been made fun of enough tonight. <laughs> oof. Oof. This did not yeah. turn out how I thought it would. Oh, no. It would have been big oof. Okay, so what? Hold on, let me. I'm fucked. <laughs> no, you're fine. It it only attacks bad people, I think. I'm, I'm... Well, hol so hollow guard on me. I am a bad. I have to make it bigger. Yeah. Right, what a bigger. <laughs> it hits all of them. I'm not doing. This. Okay, uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's all isn't it centered on you though? Yeah. It is, and it gets 15 feet, so it hits all of them. Um. Yeah. Uh, if they start their turn there, they have to make a DC 16 wisdom saving throw <laughs> or take the damage. Uh, we can worry about that later. I'm gonna use oh, a bonus perfect. action. To, use a bonus action to uh, beat up this boy. You have a boy bonus action attack spell. Yeah, a spiritual weapon. Oh. Um, okay. 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 Go for it. You get advantage. Sorry. Do? No, it, it's yeah. Snud. You help Snud. It's you attack. You I have to aim. help a specific person. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so I, a 13 does not hit. All right. <laughs> I was trying to help the next person who died. That's not a person. It's a spiritual weapon. Yeah, but he can't see it coming if I cover his eyes. <laughs> okay. We're just giving stun advantage, okay? <laughs> Although yeah. stun already has advantage. Fine, yeah. you can give the stupid spiritual weapon. Yes. Go ahead and roll again. It's okay. Cool. Natural see. one. Still doesn't yeah. hit. Nope. Okay. It's a weapon is useless. Oh, it's not. It's not. You're just rolling shit. This is better than me. At least it can do damage. Yeah. You need to get a magic weapon. Um, Snud, what are you doing? I am attacking. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it, Snud. 15 to hit. Oof, no. And 25 to hit. That does. Alright, that is a damage. Now oh. my turn. Alrighty, Elman. No, I'm just gonna stay there oh, and make concentration and say, yay, go Snud and give him inspiration. Okay, and so Snud, you are now time. inspired. You have a D8? Is it also, still a D8? Yeah, it's a... Okay. Alrighty, so you're concentrating oh, on this dude. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the one on the left. Hold on, let's watch. Let's watch what? Ah, uh, another fail. Yep, that is a fail. I'm sorry, friend. Bad. I know, but it's not good enough. Okay, Zai. Right. I'm attacking this boy right here. Sorry, I just moved him so I could put the thing on him. He's okay. still there. Okay, which boy? Sorry. Boy. Would that still be a flank? Yep. Advantage. Okay. There's okay. a 20 to hit. Yep. Go ahead and roll damage. 17 more damage. Nice. Okay. Second. There's a 19 to hit. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. 18 more damage. Dang, you are damage. rolling so well on your damage, man. Okay, he is like, as you swing your axe into it, you're cracking his leg armor, and it shoots a big crack up him. He looks like he's barely hanging on. Huh. Okay, we might want to move before this one breaks. Okay, speaking of, he's going to slam down on top of Snud. That is a 12. Okay. <laughs> um, intelligence Never saving mind. throw. That is a four. Nope. Um, when you this dude to attack it when it attacked at Snud. Yeah. Okay, yes. go ahead and roll damage, or go ahead roll. and roll the hit with uh, with advantage because of flanking. That's yep. Twenty-seven. Yep. yep. Well, roll to make sure you don't crit because don't you crit on a nineteen too? Yeah. Oh, Snud, I haven't been paying attention. If you got a nineteen. He okay, rolls a twenty-six, I believe. He Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Seven. That Four is damage. enough to kill it. Wow, so I bleed. Thanks for telling hey, maybe we should move out of the way. Hips so... <laughs> you don't want hollow? I've had enough of you. Do you want to fight? Do you want to you go outside? One v one, man. <laughs> so I need you all to roll constitution saving throws. Except Elman, who's pouting behind. Yeah. 
and not in this path. No, <laughs> damn it, I rolled I got a 17. Rook rolled a 16. That's awesome. I got an 18 because it was snud. A constitution Thanks. saving throw? Yeah, okay. Oh, thank you, snud. You were really helpful this fight. What I'm here for. 22. Okay, so, um. Oh, yeah, Cass is 17. Okay, so you guys, Zai, you take six force damage. The rest of you take three force damage. And then, ooh, gosh. And then you take 10 poison damage, Zai, and the rest of you take five. <coughs> okay. I'm looking that bad. Alrighty, as he explodes into black sludge. Yay, we did it! And that that's two down. And one being currently restrained by Elman. This dude is going to attack you, Zyla. That is a 14, does not hit. No. In fact I laugh at his his face. If I can find it. Okay. A DM two wisdom saving throws if you wouldn't mind. It's not your turn. Oh, it's at the start of. Oh turn. God, damn it! <laughs> That's a teen and a seventeen. Okay, cool. Then uh, they only then they take half. Of, then they take half a twenty three if they beat sixteen. Okay, so that is eleven. Ooh. Oh, by the way, this. The spirit guardians look like look like um, necrotic dead versions of uh, the these boys. <laughs> That's funny. So many okay. studs. Cast. Uh, I'm gonna cast my spell. Uh, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna cover its eyes again. Get... This is the one that Elman has a thing on. I'm gonna cover this one's eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Alrighty, Dr. Rex. Yeah, it's my turn. Um, hmm. Does anyone need healing? Uh, I could use some healing. I can use some healing. I can use some healing. I'm missing okay, seven well, health. You can go sit there and cry. Guys, I only have one level three spell and two level one use spells. So. Use your third level. Uh -huh. I mean, what if, no. Actually, there are only two of them. You know what? There's only two of you left. I highly doubt any of you can die that quickly. Oh, yeah, um, we just took a rest. Huh? Alright, so I guess I'll do mass healing word for the three of you. Oh, including myself, actually. So, you guys get six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven HP back, including myself. Can you get Elman too? Elman didn't take any damage, did he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he would seven. get a two. Woo! How much? He would get a two. It's 60. Six. Eleven? Or is this foot up or something? Then, uh, did anyone use any more healing? Because I can use my, uh, bonus action. Uh, I oh. need healing. I'm topsy turd. What's Let that? Him oh. Let him pay for his actions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wait. So, does anyone actually need healing, though? Oh no! You know what? Don't heal me. Heal the other guy. Just for Hollow. Yeah. Can use my channel divinity. I just need to know if you guys need healing or not. I'm good. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I would need healing. I'm so away from uh, my. Okay. Well, since Zai's the only one who needs it, I'm just gonna cast a cure wounds on Zai then. Cool. Um, I'm gonna use my one of my, my second to last first level cure wounds on Zai. Um, you get five, six, seven, eight. That's one d eight plus eight. Zai, you get six, seven, eight, and you get nine HP back. Cool. Zai, you get one. You get nine HP back. All right, cool. All right, that's my last uh, first level spell. That's third. Uh, I have to use the Pearl of Power next turn, but I'm on. Um, but, uh, you're still, I totally forgot this. You're still standing in the sludge. Uh, you started your turn in the sludge, so I need you to make a strength saving throw. 
Oh, I didn't know it still did that. I would have moved otherwise. Well, you're standing. Uh, you there. guys haven't. You guys haven't come across it yet, so you wouldn't know. <laughs> so, strength saving throw. Oof. I just I forgot. It's when you start your turn there. So well, that I'm, is. I'll just move this turn. That is eight radiant damage and nine light uh, acid damage. No, lightning. I'm really happy right. I gave myself some healing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. still looking very bad now, but... <laughs> You're not dead. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah, that's everything I can do. Sorry, I totally forgot about that. Snud's not no staying in it. Snud, what are you doing? Alright, Snud is going to move and use his free action to give a high five to another Snud. <laughs> they don't look like Snud. <laughs> they look like Knight. But that's Pass fine. The and then I'll move <laughs> I'll move right here below the other Snud. <laughs> okay. And attack. Is he this double guy. as powerful because No. <laughs> <laughs> he gets advantage though because you're you're helping. It's Joey's there. Yeah, well, not Andrew, because you're helping. Yeah, that hits. Uh, 27 to hit. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'll, give, I'll, I'll use a spell slot to Divine Smite. Yes. Divine Smite. So that's 48. 16 points of damage. The 16 plus 20. Okay. How do you want to kill this dude? Uh, I'm just going to crush his skull. Okay. Uh are you like scaling him? How is that working? Okay, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna I'm gonna crush his kneecap. And then he's, <laughs> he's going coming for your kneecaps. To, he's just gonna uh, I'll yell timber and then he's just gonna fall on, into the sludge. Okay. Yeah, more sludge, yeah. And also explodes into a pile of sludge. So I need you, Cass, and Zai. Before to... I do that because I rolled a crit, I get to give uh, temporary hit points. Okay, okay. Give it to me and uh, Cass. Okay. It's so uh, I have to roll. Sorry. Hey guys, big moment. Good. Uh, 1d6. You give five temporary hit points to me and Cass. Nice. Okay, so I need you, Cass, and Zai to roll wisdom saving throws. Okay. 17. 19. Wow. Okay, you guys all safe? Yeah. Um, so you take... God, why is... Who Who did this to me? Who Who set this up? Who picked this? You. Yes, I know. I'm good to <laughs> know myself. So you take 10 points... Oh, nope, halved. 5 points of radiant damage. Okay. And... All of you. And you take... Four points of force damage. Nice. As this thing explodes on top of you. Uh, Cass, you're in the air snud. You are not standing in it now. Why do I have shape picked? Um, Zai is not standing in it. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. Okie dokie. Mr. Pouty in the corner. Uh, <laughs> I just man maintain concentration this time. Oh my god, we did it. You, well, also that dude that casted on you just died. Oh wait, he doesn't mean uh -huh. concentration. Never mind. Yeah, it's not concentration it. anyway. It's not concentration, so you had to save. I read that again. Yeah. Okay, so you saved. <laughs> He's not slow anymore, yay. But that was the end of his turn. Okay, so Zai. disadvantage on that saving throw? <laughs> no. He saved, it's fine. Jordy, you did it. Jordy's Jordy, the I real MVP of this battle. <laughs> okay. Zai, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna hit this doodad. I mean, yeah, you're not standing in sludge. Oh, yeah, stand in sludge. Yeah, it's not. It's if it fills more than half the square. I'm at 13. Um, I'm gonna use my second attack. Okay. 25 to hit. It's 
Doesn't he get advantage because he's prone? Oh, wait. Yeah, he thinks Eleven. he's prone. You get advantage because he's well, prone. He doesn't think he's prone. He is prone. <laughs> oh, so that's 11 damage then, and then my second attack then. Yeah, yeah. That's 23, but I'm going to roll again. That is a 22, either way. Yep. Go ahead and roll damage. That's 13 damage. Nice. Zai is like fucking shit up over here. Doing so much damage. No, I, I suck. Hollow, Hollow uh, has already stated I suck. So. I never said that. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay. Okay. Putting words in my mouth. Um, this dude is making a save. <laughs> that is a. That's a sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, that makes it. Are you ready for this? That was a natural twenty. Nice. <laughs> so Ooh, he, me? No, no. That that's his turn though. So he is no longer under the effect of. Is it the start of his turn or end of his turn? The end of his. He has turn. to do it for his action. So yeah, he could do yeah, a yeah. bonus action. He he's nope. That's it. Bonus action, dragon the breath. Yeah, bonus he's action. Still far away, like the bitch we know he. Fireball. Wow. No. <laughs> okay, Doctor Rex. Oh, wow. Why did you just give me? Um, oh wait, Dr. he Rose? started. He started his turn in your thing, didn't he? Uh, he is twenty feet away, and I move, so he does not. Oh, um, sorry. Because of that, I'm going to move closer. <laughs> okay. He can get up out of here. 20. That's another sorry. 10. Alright, cool. So I can move here. What? Hello. You see it, my turn. I did? I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. I did not mean to. I literally did not mean uh -huh. to. What? Uh -huh. This token is uh -huh. gonna help out. I meant to do it for every single other turn, though. No. Yeah. I'm gonna okay, do Kat. it. I'm gonna attack. <laughs> Just kidding. Help action. What if I can <laughs> You could have asked okay. Nudge for the repair back. Yeah, that's gonna be like a whole conversation. Like, like... Yeah, true. You have a point. <laughs> okay. Good to know, no. Doctor Dr. Rex. Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, bonus Move. action. Hit him with my spiritual weapon. Hold on. Eh. With advantage. Okay. Spiritual I'm... weapon. And... With advantage. Oh, yeah. cool. My spiritual weapon is second level. Last. Last. Hey. Yeah, 22 hits. He takes did I make him hit damage. because of the advantage? Yes, you did. Nice. And, um... Does it make you feel a little bit better? <laughs> I'm going to cast, really uh, I'm just going to use my action to cast, uh... Hmm. He has higher wisdom than he does dex, so I'm going to bonus action cast, uh... Hmm... I'm just gonna bonus action cast Sacred Flame on him. He has to make a DC 16 save. You mean action cast Sacred Flame? I mean, yes, it still is, like, because that's a bonus action. Yeah, he fails. That's an 8. Cool. He takes 6 radiant damage. Dope. Alrighty. Snud. Alright, I'm going to attack him. Wait, where are you? <laughs> I am right That's a good here. question. Go the okay. other side. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> go ahead and... Oh my god. Go ahead and just... just 20 to hit. Yup. 12 bludgeoning damage. My god. Or 20. Yup. And then it's my turn. Okay. He is... Yep, we're getting there. Elmin. Uh, mm, still okay. pouting. I'm just, nah, I'll stand up and go. St okay. Oh, your dagger's magical. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I accidentally exited and... out my character sheet. You did what? Exited out my character sheet in my raid. Oop. <laughs> in your raid. Oh my god, I'm going back to pouting. Oh, are you disengaging? <laughs> are you taking the attack of opportunity? No. I don't care. No, it's my sin. Not my Okay, that's a 28 to hit. Kill me. That's 15. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. 15. My, my yeah. sentinel says yep. I'm gonna fuck him up. Yep. <laughs> Elvin's being such an edgelord today. Are you okay, Shorty? You need a hug? No, don't try <laughs> No, don't touch me. Okay, that's the 13. Yeah, no. 
advantage. Why does he get advantage? Because I'm there. Okay, fine. Why did not get action. advantage? Uh, I did the help action. Oh, oh, but I already did the help action for his sword, right? You know what? Yeah, Shorty, you would have gotten advantage because, like, there's. Oh, because Zai is flanking. flanking it also. Yeah, he's flanking. So you would have gotten Look at advantage. that! There's so I rolled the same thing. Oh my okay. god. Six I'm piercing. Not taking, I'm not taking the attack of the That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Are you pouring any of your bardic inspiration shit in there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And Zai, that doesn't matter because he's not hitting oh. somebody else. So. Okay, but still, look at this bullshit. Okay. Now, Zai, it's your turn. <laughs> mm, I'm, just, I'm gonna cap its kneecaps. Oh my god! Advantage. Advantage, babe! 19. But still, I rolled a four twice. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Okay. He is barely hanging on. Hold on. Get attack, boy. 15. 24 to hit. Cheeks are gonna get clapped. <laughs> are you smacking his ass now? 17. <laughs> 17. It's a turn of phrase, sorry. It's not literal. <laughs> okay, how do you wanna clap his cheeks? <laughs> I'm sorry, you chose to say that statement. I'm sticking my axe right in between his ass cheeks. Oh my god! Swinging up underneath the whole thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you're really glad to be here, Element, as the black sledge comes out of his ass. Are, are you ready? I need everybody except Dr. Rux to make an intelligence saving throw. Hey. Roll the three. Oh, wow. I'm actually kind of decent at this. 16. <laughs> I think. No, not 16. It's only 10 feet. 14. <laughs> oh, wait, You're no. Really wait, that's, I, I, I thought the one with the circle was not. No, no, it's <laughs> Who knows? Where's the real Which, What is that? <laughs> a fish. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> right, I'm like dying just a little bit. Elman, I need an intelligence saving throw for you. Oh, blast. Why did I stay here? <laughs> I believe in you, Elman. Come on, Elman. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't believe in you anymore. <laughs> okay, none of you saved. Um, that is uh, nine points of psychic damage and an additional nine points of cold damage. Okay. As the thing bursts into black sludge and covers all of you, and it's gross. Yeah, from his ass. <laughs> from his ass. Oh, uh, good news. Uh, Rooks gets to go to the bathhouse again. <laughs> <laughs> the bathhouse down here? Listen, oh, when they get back to town, obviously. Listen, Rooks likes the bathhouse. It's the one place he can relax. That's fair. Okay. Um... Yeah, so you guys are all standing there covered in black sludge. And I think that that's a good point to end our session tonight. Yeah, black sludge. Coming yeah. Up Alrighty, so I guess we will see everybody next week uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Thursday, the 4th, for the start of our brand new campaign. And then set fr nope Friday, the day after. Oh my God, why are words so hard? Uh, 7 p.m. for the continuation of this as they continue to hunt for Ebony staff. Yeah. I sure hope we take a long rest right. before we continue. We it's like woke 10 up. in the morning. Yeah, we it's woke up. Time for Joey another one. Yeah, and I don't have any more spells left. Fuck exactly. You guys. We're taking a long rest. <laughs> How are we going to sleep? One. After we literally just left. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, Hello. If you, are, you guys, are you guys heading um, back up and taking a long rest then? You're going to just, yes. you, you woke up, fought during the day, then went back? Okay, then we're not going to end it here. I have something quick because I'm mad at myself because I forgot. Um, okay. so as you guys sleep, um, Snud, yeah. you begin to dream. Okay. Uh, all you see is darkness at first swirling around you. It feels very oppressing. 
which is a little weird for someone like you who grew up underneath a mountain, much like this. Um, it almost reminds you a little bit of the ooze that you've been seeing. Uh, just like the super, super dark black, but like little hints of color here and there. Um, you hear in the distance as you dream a soft ve feminine voice whimpering with small sniffles. Uh, looking around, you see a super soft but bright gold light in the distance flickering like in and out as if it's about to go out. And the small voice says, help Someone, please. It's dark. It's so dark. Um, will you make a wisdom check for me? Can. Was it a saving throw or just a check? Just a check. Since he's yeah, not conscious, does he get a minus two on that? No. Um, okay. Okay. You hear the familiar voice of your goddess whisper to you. She's scared and a lone little hero. Find her and rescue her. But while she may seem helpless, she's anything but, for she is a formidable weapon in that which you face. You will create many amazing stories together. And then yeah. the next morning when you wake up, you recall this. Or I guess the middle right. of the night, like the middle of the afternoon when you wake up. <laughs> because you guys went and took a long rest after fighting. Uh, hey guys, we have another princess to save. What? Fantastic. That's nice. You get to save another princess. It's awesome. Uh, I don't think there's anyone down here. Ah, now it's nice. Okay. Ready. Well, then I guess let's end the end the session here. All right. right. Okay. Good night. Everybody say good night. Good night. Good night, Shord. Uh... <laughs>